Okay, we should be live. Waiting for YouTube to say the event started. It has started. So we should be live, like always. Let me know in the chat if the audio and the video seems good, and then we'll start going. We're going to be overclocking the Kane Pin 2080 Ti today. Tin from EVJ is already in chat talking trash, saying AMD is easy to overclock. RTX Ti equals not so easy. Why? Did, did he actually overclock it? Or did Vince? Yeah, Tin, did you actually? Tin's in the chat like, I know what this card can do on LN2 because someone else overclocked it. Because Vince told it. him. <laughs> and, and told me what it can do. I like it. All right. So we're back. This is Joe Stefanzi from Bearded Hardware. Once again, let me tweet out I the gotta link. Sneeze. Now you got to sneeze. Yeah. So tweet it's out all, the link. It's uh, all this talking we, about Tim. <laughs> You're just allergic to his bullshit. Just allergic. <laughs> we are live uh, oh, with the false alarm. Kinpin 2080 Ti. All right. So it's tweeted. So today we are overclocking the KP 2080 Ti. It's supposed to be among the best 2080 Ti's. It's definitely the sexiest one. <laughs> and uh, it's also no power limit. So we have the XOC BIOS on there. So we go full power. And so for once, there's an NVIDIA card with no power limitation. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> that was our biggest problem with all of them ever. Uh, OK, so he looks like a giant old baby, someone says about you, I'm assuming. Am I wearing a diaper? No. Are you, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Uh, will you sign mouse pads again if we buy during the stream? Wasn't planning to for this one. If there's like insane demand, then we might do it. But uh, Joe's got to get on a plane at the end of the stream, so um, we got to be careful on time. But anyway, so as previously, this one will we'll go for a couple hours. We're using liquid nitrogen to overclock, so we've got two 180 liter tanks. So we kind of let chat fill in for a little bit before we really get going, and. The best way to support this type of stream, because it does cost money to get these, to get that guy out here on a plane. I'm never a cheap date. And then, uh, <laughs> and then spend a couple days doing this stuff. If you want to support the streams, you can either do super chat during the stream, and we'll read it. We run about a 30 minute to one hour delay on reading them. Uh, we will read all of them up to a, a point pretty late. I'll cut it off. So super chats are a great way to support. Or if you go to store.gamersnexus.net, you can pick up a shirt like this one, which is the blueprint shirt. And then we also have the large and the medium mod mats back in stock. So these uh, ha consistently sell out. They are finally fully back in stock. And we, I think we have enough large for this stream, but we are running low on large. But I did order a lot of the mediums and the large this time. So those are on store.cameratexas.net if you want to support. And then we got two super chats. Todd Vance, $2. Thank you very much for the first super chat of the stream. Said, hey, guys, good luck with the overclock. And then Justin Clifton, $2. Good morning, GN. Good morning, Justin. Is, uh, it's kind of afternoon now. Well, it's my morning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Still feels like morning, to be honest. Yeah. Someone in chat says, teaching my ferret to liquid nitrogen cool my GPU with this stream. Well, wow. I'm doing the same thing with Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. Can't help uh, myself with that. <laughs> so, uh, Alan Tupot, this is the icon. Got to be careful with it because it's like a perfect mount now. Yeah. We think. Yeah. So. Um, it was better than the other one, that's for sure. Yeah. So this is the icon pot that Vince, that Kinpin gave me when we visited Taiwan about a month and a half ago, and we've got the Kinpin card on there. We have the VRM is still on there. It's so the heatsink. Well, the VRM, of course. Yeah. We we cut the VRM off. Actually, we're just it's just, it's just a GPU. We uh, didn't have a VRM. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the VRM yeah. heatsink on both sides. Uh, three power connectors, and then I've installed the XOC BIOS from Tin's website. Tin has been in chat a little bit. He's ex-devs, if you see him in chat. He was, uh, I don't know what the exact accurate title is for him, but I think we call him Mad Scientist yeah. behind the Kingdom card. Yeah, I think he has a website called xdevs.com. So yes. So go and check it out. That's where all the goodies for a bunch of overclocking Kingpin stuff. Yeah, there's some really, really good OC guides there, too. Yeah, and a lot of other nerdy stuff. Yeah, so if you're interested in that, he's uh, he's in chat. Feel free to bother him so that he stops bothering us. Yeah, please. <laughs> and, uh, please bother him and, uh, as much as possible. For the CPU, we'll walk through this just while chat continues to fill in. So CPU, we've got a 360-millimeter radiator. This is just a thermal take flow 
radiator is just easy to install. And then a 9980XE, I think we're at 4.8 gigahertz. Yep. So it's it's not pushed super hard, but it's pushed pretty far for liquid. And memory is at uh, 4,000 megahertz. And timings, we just did like 15 or something. Yeah. Because on the Trident Z Royals. Gold. On the Trident Z Royals, yeah. The silver and gold. And I've linked all those parts in the description. EVGX 299 Dark for the motherboard. And there's two power supplies for this one. I'll show those that are on the bottom here. So this is the uh, Corsair AX1600i. This one is powering only the GPU, and it's on a different, it's on a standalone circuit. And then that one is the EVGA 1600 watt T2, and that's powering only the rest of the system, the motherboard, the CPU, and that's on its own circuit. So they are isolated, that way we don't trip a breaker or something. Tin said they have a fan in the front of the garden. Tin said what? Have a fan in the front of the garden. Oh, to put one in front of it? Yeah, it's not hot now. Seems fine. Well. No. Deal with it, Tin. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't have any issues with it on cold. I, I'm assuming he means like during the, uh, during the overclocking or something. I need this set up for Star Citizen, someone says. Uh, and he says, Kingpin is asleep. All right, so. He's always slacking, that's why. <laughs> chat starting to fill in. We've got a couple more super chats, and we'll, we'll pour some Allen 2 after this. Uh, Kyle Glasgow, $5, no message. Thank you very much, Kyle, for the five bucks. Johnny Nimble, $5 Canadian. You've got to show off the international audience now. Yay, cooking with Allen 2 round three. Looking, uh, cooking is a great date idea, even if the date isn't cheap. Well, Joe, I thought. I'll make ice cream next time. Yeah. That, we should actually do that. Yeah, we should. <laughs> you could do it. Period, $2. Break it. Break what? The card? The card, I guess. Sure. Need more than two dollars for that. Yeah, for real. Timothy McDonald. I don't. What does it cost? Eighteen hundred. Is that what that card costs? I think so. I think that's. Or was it sixteen? I don't know. Tim can correct us in chat, or someone yeah. who can use the internet. I think it's sixteen to eighteen hundred somewhere there. Timothy McDonald, two dollars. Can't wait to see what you get out of the KP twenty eighty Ti. Uh, yes, us two. Three more to read for now. Kyle Glasgow, five dollars. Question: I have an older kin. Pin, pin, P-E-E-N. King pin? King pin, uh, 780 Ti with a messed up power connector. What is the best way to unbend the pins? Sorry for the dull post. Unbend the pins on the power connector. I'm not even sure what that means. I don't know that I've ever bent pins on like a six pin connector. Oh, we probably maybe pulled it out. Like maybe you can, yeah, if you like, you can unsocket them by accident. If you pull it out by the cable. I have uh, to see it to be honest. Unbend the pins. I mean, bend it back. Yeah, I don't I, know, maybe I'm, just like. Uh, I'd have to literally see a picture of it. Yeah, tweet a picture at us, uh, at Gamers Nexus. Uh, Chordakis George, ten dollars. Thank you. Have you considered disabling Spectre B2 and related mitigations? It makes quite a big difference in performance. Uh, yeah, so we've run. I usually do it, but I'm not sure on this one if we did it. I don't. I think that updated Windows last night, so... Oh, yeah, when we plugged yeah. in the internet to grab all the utilities. Uh, NZ Udden, $5 off topic, but do either of you play a musical instrument? Nope, but I can sing. <laughs> you want to sing Silver and Gold for us? Silver and <laughs> Gold. Trident Z, Tried and Z Royal. Uh, I do not presently in any good capacity. Uh, he kind of scared you. To, to sing? For you. <laughs> Static Albatross, ten dollars. Uh, so how about them Lakers? I'll take the ten bucks. Thank you. I don't know <laughs> I'm assuming that's a sports reference. Uh, okay, so chat is starting to fill in. We're at eighteen hundred now. That's picking it up a bit. Said nineteen hundred. Is that what it was? What? Oh, at the top it said nineteen hundred. Oh, I was looking at it right here, and then oh, Bill Zoid's joined chat as well. I guess actually hardcore overclocking's here. Ten is here. Cool. Well, let's uh, let's get started. I guess. So today, our benchmark of choice is primarily going to be Times by Extreme. I don't know if we even have Port Royal on here, but uh, we'll run TSE. And then, like I said, CPU is just at 4.8, all core. Uh, we have the memory at 4,000 megahertz, and we didn't try very hard for the memory or the CPU. The focus is entirely GPU today. Well, we run them like plus 1,600. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean the uh, system memory. Oh, system memory. Yeah, yeah. but we will be focusing on the Kinpin memory because that's actually somewhat significant. So, 
Joe, you've got the RTX classified tool here, the classified software, precision software. Do you want to walk through the software solutions? Yeah, is it easy to see on the screen? It will be in a second. Oh, I need to mention the, uh, I'll get it after this. So yeah, let's, Andrew zoomed in on it, you're good. You good? This is on a delay, yeah. Yeah, so you have a couple different things in the RTX classified controller. You can download this from, uh, if you go to xdevs.com and uh, you search for the um, Kingpin 2080 Ti, like he has a full guide on basically how to do things on the on the Kingpin card. So you download it, basically install it. You'll see that you have to uncheck. It. You have uh, basically all the pretty much everything you need. You don't need an EV bot. Um, everything you need, you can just basically control through software. So it's nice uh, not ha needing to have the EV bot. So uh, the NVDD, this is uh, basically GPU voltage. So for now. Well, we're pretty let's do high a full, temps. Let's do a full stock run, too. Oh, yeah. Let me with just, just cold. Go back to default, then. Yeah, so we're going to end up running uh, stock, but which is basically like about, well, 1.1. The voltage, whatever. yeah, voltage should end yeah, up Yeah, it just like, set to auto for now, but. It should end up in the 1080 millivolt range. Now, if range. we want to change it, all we have to do is just uncheck auto, hit MVD to where we want to go. I'm just going to reset it to yeah. default. And then uh, FBVDD is actually mem voltage, so you can change that. And then PEX voltage is kind of like a, almost like a PLL on the old one. It's kind of like an IMC voltage. And then you have frequency and then the 1.8 volt rail. And then you also can control the, the load line. And then the big one is the yeah. OCP. I, so. was, I was running into that issue when I was pre-testing it just on air, just with the stock liquid cooler. So um, just overclocking it, uh, eventually as you increase the voltage, you'll hit yeah. OCP, and so you do have to disable that. Yeah, so that, that's the big one. I mean, you can't really do anything without that, so yep. that's the one you want to do. So that's overcurrent protection, Yep. and that's what protects the GPU when it thinks there's too much current, but that is not a concern of ours today because that's intentional. Uh, I do have to quickly mention the advertiser for the stream. So we've got Gigabytes actually decided to run uh, their monitor for this one because people kept asking about what it was during the stream yesterday. So it's the ARS AD 27 QD monitor. It's a 27-inch, 1440p, 144Hz FreeSync gaming monitor, one millisecond response time. And I've got a link to that in the description below if you are interested in it. And it has everyone's favorite, RGB LEDs. Ooh, so pretty. So clearly, if you have a setup like this one and you want to show off to the camera, then this is what you buy. So that is the ad for the Such stream. Such a show off. Uh, Billy Gray in chat said, is anyone from EVJ in the chat? And the answer is yes, 10 XDevs is from EVGA. Yeah, Vince is sleeping. Yep, and, <laughs> and the best part of all of this is that 10 and Kingpin uh, already know what this GPU can do, which we discovered because one, 10 told us, and two, yep. two uh, when I disassembled the card the other day, we saw some blue Kingpin paste on there, yep. which does not come stock. Yep. So they pre-tested it. You feel pressure? Nah. We found out. We knew what they were up to. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to be sneaky. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what's first? Fill fill some melon two, and then do a stock run. Full stock run. Can you tell Joe to reply to Elmer's text messages? <laughs> Don't even know what that's about, but yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Let's fill up some melon two. All right. So first run will be complete stock. You want some milk? I don't know if you want to. I got. You it. might hurt yourself. I got. It. It's kind of full though. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of full. So this is the uh, same stuff we're using yesterday, 30 liters, and we've got a f over 180 liters over th in the tanks That's to my uh, left side. So we are good to go for the full day and some. Oh, that hurt a little bit this time. <laughs> Come on, speed it up, Steve. There you uh, go. Cool down that car. You might as well fill up a couple of those, actually. Yeah. Cool down the car because they're running at about 43 right now. Just been sitting there. Make sure it's not. Seems so good. All right, so uh, I guess I'll go over some of these. If you were in the stream yesterday, you're going to hear a little bit of repeat information right now, but I'll make it quick. Uh, oh, someone says, Was this the one with the screw and the thermal pad that you opened up at their lab? I don't know if it's that one specifically. That'd be funny if it was. That would be funny. Yeah. That'd be funny if the screw is still in there. Yeah. <laughs> Open it up, it's still there. Did you not look? 
What? Did you not look at this? Oh, group? no. I mean, it might be on the VRM heatsink right now. Oh, man. Yeah. Be short in it. Uh, so that was actually Ten's card. Ten reassembled that. And Ten is in chat. Ten also. Is he still in chat? <laughs> ten has left the chat. Ten also. Did we beat him up already? Was uh, was one of the two main people working on this card. Yeah. And left a screw in a throw pad <laughs> when he reassembled it. No, it's all good. Though. Whoops. <laughs> it shows that even even the people designing the cards. Well, those can screws make... are so tiny. Like, yeah. <laughs> they're kind of ridiculous. You, if you drop one and then try to find it, you're they're screwed. Kind of ridiculous, huh? They should like include more screws when like with extras. The card. Yeah, there's always extras when I take them apart. Well, yeah, that's because you never put it back. <laughs> <laughs> so LN2. We call that professional. Yeah, that's right. When you you know you don't need them all, so you just leave them out. That's right. All right. Yes. You have to admit the card is very pretty. I love this. I love the heat sinks. All right. So, uh, are we going to do a stock run? Oh, that's right. Yeah, let's just get a little cold. <laughs> we'll do a default. Make sure you want me to enable. Yeah, we'll just go completely stop. Yeah, I don't know what the default load line is. I thought. It says level know. zero. Yeah, I don't think that is resetting properly, but we'll, we'll leave it. I mean, we could reboot if you want. Uh, so we're going to do a default run. In the meantime, if you want to support the stream, definitely pick up one of the large or medium mod mats. The medium has a GPU teardown design on it and uh, also has basically the anatomy of a GPU labeled on the mat, if you want to know where the VRM components are, things like that. The large one is four feet by two feet in freedom units, and you're going to have to convert that for me, sorry. And, uh, that one is also back in stock. and. No problems with LN2. Not at all, actually. <laughs> you ready? So, We're going to yes. run that first one. This is going to be a default run, just to kind of see what the score goes. Are we doing a full benchmark on this? Yeah. All the way through? Yeah, full default. That way we, we can see what our improvement is when we run it high. So this... I'm surprised Tin's not saying we're chicken clocking right now. Because <laughs> technically I don't think it is chicken clocking when you're at default. Tin, or uh, someone said, use gloves, guys. Should we do this again briefly? We did this yesterday. We might as well. So, all right, uh, let's do it briefly. This stuff doesn't really, one, you just don't let it soak. And ah, no. <laughs> uh, don't let it soak. Um, there's an effect, light and frost effect. Uh, you can look up if you want to learn more about why that happens. But it's, I mean, it's minus 196 degrees Celsius. It basically evaporates as soon as it hits something. Anything. Anything. Yeah. And uh, the whole trick is not to soak. Yeah. So if you, we, we said this again, it's repeat information if you saw it yesterday, but we'll get it through it quickly. You pour it in your sock or down your pant leg, you're going to be hurting a lot. So don't well, do that. You still have to soak. Like you'd have to like pick up your leg and pour it on. Right, and like let it stick to your leg. Yeah. And then you're in, in some trouble. But um, these are the gloves that are rated for use with it. You could use like if you used leather workman's gloves. I feel as like I you said, just wear like smack. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, these are a bit difficult to work with on this stuff, and I, I feel like the risk is actually higher from using it than not. Yeah, so it's kind of awkward. I, I can barely fit my hand Maybe there. if they made like a nice, like, thin one, you know? Yeah, but, actually, I can't even get my hand out of there. Yeah. Spill, so. That's how accidents happen, when yes. you try to be safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so no, gloves are uh, not something we're worried about. Yeah, we, we usually use the gloves for like, when we're actually pouring to the lower doer, because then the hose gets basically Really, really, really cold. I think you measured it yesterday. It was what, minus 70 it was Celsius? Minus, yeah, it was close to minus 90, I think. Oh, minus 90, so, that's what it was. Yeah, this transfer hose, um, it freezes over. And yeah. it's actually, it freezes over to the, the point that as it gets colder and you get Whoa. all the ice on it, you'll start hearing it cracking. Like, yeah. you'll hear the ice crack as it uh, freezes. It's pretty cool. So um, this one, when it freezes, you you do not grab it with your bare hands. No. Because you will get burns. That's what the glove is for. And blisters. Yeah, glove or, I mean, I just used this piece of cardboard yesterday. So we are being technically somewhat safe. 
Sort of. Yeah, sort of. But you got to also imagine I've been using liquid nitrogen Sound. professionally for 10 years. That's so. true, too, yeah. Yeah, I'm a decade now. Yes, long time. Uh, I think I'm going to have to make a video, though, with, like, all doctored up. Get, like, the wig, white coat yeah. and, like... Get we should have done that, actually. Get the safety glasses and the... Then we'd be like, hazmat suit. These. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be kind of fun. What about eyes, man? Just be careful. Well, it doesn't really bounce off. Like, it, don't, it, it's kind of difficult to get in your don't eyes. Don't pour it in your eyes, yeah. Uh, all right, so um, is this still the first pass? This is, right? Yep, still going. All right, cool. Kind of a long benchmark. Uh, so we are, let's see, I don't, where's our notes from yesterday? Let me open those up. Prep notes. So what we're doing right now is a baseline. Now, NVIDIA cards are extremely cold sensitive, like they're temperature sensitive. So as you drive down the temperature, the clock will go up naturally without even doing anything, which means that this isn't the stock number you would get if you ran it with the liquid cooler on it. We'll have a separate review of the KP card with the stock cooler on it. But uh, our, our frequency will be higher by nature of being 0 0.6 degrees Celsius right now, uh, but it's still going to give us a baseline. So yeah. we'll see, see what that is. TS or TSX, we're running time spy extreme. Extreme. Right we wanted to kind of take the CPU out of the equation. Yes. So we're going to do the extreme versions. Extreme versions are usually more GPU centric. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, I came too late for the stream yesterday. If I buy a mod mat, will you sign it like yesterday? We're not currently doing anything like that. Like I said, if I see a ton of demand, I'll open it up or something. But um, today, it's just, it's, uh, I think we, well, so we did oversign. We oversigned the mouse pads, the, the black and blue mouse pads specifically. We oversigned by like 30, I think. So if you buy the black and blue mouse pad during the stream today, there's a chance you'll get one of the signed ones. But there's no guarantee at this point. It's just we, we signed extra by accident. So. Uh, if you order during the stream, we'll ship it out if we have it still, if someone else hasn't beaten you to it. But I can tell you that as of right now, we do still have at least like over 20 of them that are still signed by both of us. Yep. So if you, if you buy one Did like... Did a lot of signing yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> actually, we can... You want to show some of the pile right there? There's, so uh, <laughs> yeah, if you want to buy one of these, the black and blue mouse pad, we weren't planning on signing again today because Joe's got to catch a flight. But like I said, we signed uh, about 30 too many of these. So if you, we don't have any orders of these, at least last I checked a few minutes ago today. So if you buy one today, you'll get one of those. Um, and then we oversigned the white and blue by like seven. So there's less chance you get one of those, but they're also less popular. So if you want to pick one up, they are still there and we can ship them out to you, but we're not signing any more once those are done. Uh, otherwise the mats are in stock. You have a cherry pick 2080 Ti, question mark. Well, uh, we think maybe to some, or at least pre-tested 2080 Ti. Uh, someone asked if we have a cherry picked one. I don't know if it's I'm not sure cherry picked. Mean, it's but totally cherry picked. Yeah, but it's pre-tested. I think, I think most of the ones that you buy are actually um, bin from the factory. So even yep. if you buy one, you have a good chance to have a, a good card. That's so. my understanding as well. Yeah. So what's our, our baseline is, let's, let me take a note of this. AK flat all the way. What we really want to concentrate on is the graphics scores, the GP1 yep. and the GP2. 7577, 48.11, and 44.48. Yep. So baseline for graphics scores, if you wanted the points, is 7577. We'll keep an eye on that as we go. Uh, all right. So what do we do next? Overclock it? Yeah, we're going to have to go up, up to what we left off so, yesterday. So let's do... Uh, uh, yeah, so we'll work up there. You have to start there. So let's. Oh, I know you have to start up there. Otherwise, it could cause issues. You want to start there? Yeah. Why? I, I think we still have more in it. I think There's we, more in I it. I think we start like over That was there. easy. I think we start up here somewhere. Okay, we'll start there. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start uh, start overclocking it. Uh, what is. Oh, right, I'll start pulling down anyway. Okay, so Joe's going to start pouring LN2, bringing the temperature down. Where are you? What's your target right now? How far are you pulling it down? Uh, I'm going to do about minus 100. We'll start at that last minus 100 we did yesterday. Okay. The thing cool. is that around minus 70 to 80, I have to torch the pot. Right. And what that does is it basically helps 
the metal soak in the liquid nitrogen more, so you can actually control the temperature much easier. So I just have to bring it down to minus 70. We're about minus 15 now. So it's going to take a little bit. Yeah. Since we were so hot, we were pretty much positive five. And then we, let's see, we got some super chats, some comments. Uh, so is, I'm just reading some, some messages in chat. Uh, let's do this one. So we got a super chat in from Ridiculous Prime. $10, loving the live stream. Keep up the awesome work. Well, thank you for watching them. My question, similar to Titan RTX, do you think the next gen of NVIDIA cards could come with higher capacity VRAM chips? Uh, <laughs> depends on when the next gen is and what the memory technology is, I guess. Um, HBM is where you start seeing some pretty high capacity, but I have no idea right now. Next gen is not even on my radar. Our touring is still pretty new, so. Yeah, I'm not sure when we're going to end up seeing something. Yeah, I, I try not to speculate on that stuff because. And take that with a grain of salt. I, we really don't know. <laughs> yes. Uh, how much to break a piece of paper? Ten dollars from Martin Parker. I'm not sure. <laughs> break a piece of paper? What happens if you pour L two on paper? It's just evaporate, right? Probably. Yeah, I don't think. I don't, do think it's, I don't think it's going to like freeze or anything. Uh, SPRPWR, $5. Steve, have you cosplayed as Jon Snow? No, <laughs> but back when Jon Snow was first appearing in Game of Thrones, I did get that constantly. My hair was a little bit shorter, too, so uh, I, I, did, I did get that quite regularly. That'd be funny. We could do, uh, what's it called? The guys that, uh, I can't think of it right now. I just remember. On I, the wall. Or we could just do the, I mean, you could be Thor. Avengers is popular right now. And what, what is Vince? The raccoon? That's right. Someone said, <laughs> someone said Vince is like Rocket Raccoon. Or Rocket like Raccoon, that. yeah. That was Except hilarious. Kingpin? Yes, yes. Were we at 125 or 13? For mm -hmm. the offs or for the uh, voltage? Yeah, 13. Just checking. Yeah, so we're going to use 13 uh, on the GPU voltage. Then we're going to go right to 15 on the. Uh, Memory voltage, and then on the PEX, about 1.113. And we've gone to level zero for load line, which is going to be the, about the flattest we can get for voltage. And OCP is now off, so no overcurrent concerns. So that's done. Now I'm at minus 50, so you don't want to do that, obviously, on ambient temps, so I'm cold. Right. Yeah, so uh, per TIN's XDEV's guide, the maximum voltage that he kind of I guess recommends is 1.3 volts under the stock cooler and beyond that it, it does. Yeah, most likely it's probably not needed then. Yeah, yeah, well, so without the XOC BIOS and the testing I was doing, you're really not going to increase the voltage much because you just start yeah. pulling away from the power limit and there is a power limit, it's 360 watts or something like that. You put the XOC BIOS on there and then this one's got... This, this yeah, I'm going to get some more though. Put the XOC BIOS on there, and then you have no power limit, uh, at which point you can start increasing the voltage to increase stability without pulling power away from the core. But you do still have concerns of heat and of lifespan. So LN2 uh, helps us mitigate those significantly. Next one. Uh, All right. David J. Barr, $3. What are you guys running for personal rigs? You want to start, Joe? Uh, I have an 18 core, basically pretty much similar to this, but a non-KP card. So um, I'm, I think I'm using an X299 OC formula. Okay, then, yeah. Um, I think I have... Do you run it overclock to your personal system? Um, a little bit. Just a slight overclock, yeah. not too much. And then uh, a 2080 Ti, just a reference card. I'm actually right in the middle of upgrading it to just... I had it all kind of ghetto-fied, so... I'm basically uh, going through it, and probably when I go home, I'm gonna end up doing a full hardline kit. I got a bunch of goodies for it, so I need to upgrade it. Got a bunch of like uh, NVMe drives and all sorts of good stuff. I am running. I don't really use my home system, so <laughs> like I'm always here. Um, so the office I have. Uh, I don't even remember what it is. It's a. <laughs> I don't even remember what it it's is. It's an X99. Motherboard and the CPU is I, honestly I can't even remember. I think it's a I think it's an eight core 
uh, hyper-threaded, so it's like 16 When's thread. When's the last time you turned it on? <laughs> oh, that's this one. That's on every day. It's the only oh, system okay. I really use. But, I mean, it's only using two channels for the memory, because like, that's I didn't want to pull DDR4 away from test systems. So I just put two channel, two sticks in there. Sad. At home, I've got an FX8370 that's underclocked and undervolted because the motherboard, the VRM runs like 100 oh, degrees hot. idle. Yeah. So I undervolted it. So okay, we're, yeah. we're going to end up torching the pot about minus 70 to, I'll do it at minus like 50. That's going to be loud on the mic too. Yeah. <laughs> so this is torching the LN2 pot, which uh, I guess the idea is to kind of like condition the pot, right? So that it accepts the LN2 better or more efficiently or something. Yeah, what happens is if you don't torch the pot, when the heat basically builds up on the pot, you won't be able to control it as easy. So by torching it, it kind of allows you to, allows the metal to soak in the, li the liquid nitrogen quicker. So you can just like pour and keep it in kind of keep it more at a, a certain temperature instead of kind of trying to fight the temperature all the time. Yeah. So. Sure. That is, that is one of the most important tricks you showed me yesterday, too. Yeah, it's the big one. Without that one, I don't think you would have gotten nearly as far. No. Yeah, it's what most people don't realize that you have to do. And it depends on the pot. I don't think Roman's pots, you need to do it. But on these pots, but it, it's nice because you can actually, depending on how much you torch the pot, you can get your own controlled feel with it. Right, so right. I like to do about 10, 15 degrees, and then it just gives me a nice, I can just put it on, put it on. You'll see when I'm about to run a benchmark where I'll just be ch 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 So we're at minus 65-ish uh, and still going down. Yeah, we're going to do about minus. We can try and get a shot of yeah, this. Yeah, I set all the volts and everything already, and I'm going to, actually, I want to set the clocks. So which one did you want to start out on? Uh, let's, let's go conservative to start. So what are you at? You're at 1.3 volts right now? Yeah, 1.5. I can drop it down if you want. Yeah, let's come up to like, I'm thinking, honestly, we, I think we start like at 150 offset or something, and then work up from there. Just make sure I set it. Okay, so we went back to 125. We'll do, just do, uh, we'll start out with 1600. So, uh, memory, let's start with 1500 just so we can see some of the scaling differences. So memory is mostly going to impact GT2 in Time Spy Extreme. And then the core, let's do like a 150, I guess, to start. start. Look how we and we should run GPU-Z during this one, just to, or during the next one, just to show like the, the frequency. Or I guess the on-screen display works. Yeah, so we're at 2125 mem and GPU-Z. Um, the only thing is, I don't know if OCD, let's see, or OSD. OSD. Yeah, let's we'll try, try it. it. Let's see what happens. And if it doesn't work, we'll yell at Tim. He's in chat. <laughs> tell him, tell him to fix it. Yeah, I'm just gonna so, pull it down to about minus 100. Okay, so we're at minus 70 right now. We're going just down. Just keep it there. Going down another 30 degrees. You don't really need it for these clocks, but. No, we are very conservatively clocked right now, but we want to. Actually, wanna... we could probably run it now. It's not gonna be bad. I don't want to get too cold because you can have some issues with memory just right. for it getting wet. So we got uh, John Brap 499 says. Hey man, just watched the LTT roast, and when you said, at least you didn't create the 680X, I laughed my ass off. Good stuff, man. <laughs> so the context there, Corsair has a case called the 680X that we didn't particularly like. And oh, Cor did you bash it, huh? Well, yeah, Corsair had a, a rep who wasn't representing the company, but who was at the roast, mm -hmm. former boss of Linus, and he, he dinged me on something. I think mm. he talked about how, how our content puts him to sleep or something, which is fine. What? And he, uh, I think I just shouted back, at least I didn't make the 680X. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, it is a roast, right? You it is a roast. You can't be one of those. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty, uh, pretty good back and forth. So what happened there? It crashed. Yeah, I wasn't looking, actually. I just saw one went over. I was kind of more managing the bot. Right. Usually what I like to do is like go for the last box that I know of. But he's making me not do it, so I blame Steve if you don't. <laughs> If the card doesn't behave as much as we want it to. <laughs> Just saying. So it looks like we got a couple orders in. I'll shout a couple of these out. Uh, we had one from Alan, who picked up the the black and blue mouse pad. So, like I said, we're not signing them today, but we do, as of right now, still have a few that we oversigned. And I think we've got... I don't have an exact count. I'll, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. But we have at least, like, 15 
left that are oversigned from yesterday. So if you do order a black and blue shortly, uh, it looks like we've already sold through a few of them, but we have some left. If you order one shortly, it'll be signed by both of us, and then we're not signing them again after that. We had an order from David from, uh, let's see, Michigan, who picked up a mouse pad as well. And we got an order from Jesus from Spain, who picked up a mouse pad. Thank you for the support on all that. Of course, the store and the Super Chats are the best way to help us pay for the, uh, the expense that is liquid nitrogen overclocking. And we do, as I said, have the mod mats back in stock and shipping now, too. So if yeah, I didn't like OSD. Didn't like the OSD? Okay. No. Get on that tin. <laughs> Oops. Time, time to fix it. So on-screen display not liked. Man, we should have named this Rip Tin. Rip Tin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. We got any Twitter? Twitter anything? So we are running the Kane Pin 2080 Ti, and our base number for the score was 75, 77 points for GPU. Yeah, and this should be around 2265. Okay. So on cool. the, on the core itself. Because that's what we were kind of... For the frequency, you mean? Yeah, for yeah. the frequency. So for the frequency, we should... Yeah, I guess we should note that, too. So typically, yeah. 2080 Ti's run between, like, 1,800 megahertz and 19-something, maybe when it's kind of a, a higher-end stock, stock clock model. And you start overclocking it. A lot of the 2080 Ti's we've overclocked on just stock BIOS, stock cooling. They stop in the range of 2050 megahertz to maybe 2115, maybe. But typically, uh, I think we see it stop around 2050. So, and this is already at around 2200 plus megahertz. Yeah. And this is our first. I think the official was 2265 when we tested yesterday. Yeah. I'd have to run in window mode, so. We should do that at some point just to show GPU-Z. Um, uh, when we bump it up again, I'll do GPU-Z. Okay. And then the, I, I guess I'll note as well the GPU temperature reading and GPU-Z is not functional at these temperatures, right? No. Once you start going, well. Between minus 40, I think that might be the cutoff point. If I remember correctly, I think it's around minus 40. Yeah. Where it can't signal or just it basically can't read. Doesn't know what's the happening. The internal sensor just doesn't, isn't able to. Uh, we got a question from Lom. 25 PLN, thank you. Any plans for EU store? Um, it takes $1 to ship a t-shirt from the UK or Germany to Poland. But our shipping is more expensive than that. Well, we are, we are not in the UK or Germany, uh, so it is more expensive. Also, we're not like Newegg or Amazon, so our shipping isn't subsidized. And yeah, it's much more difficult uh, to try to even yeah to even ship out of the country. It's a lot of a very lot of, difficult. Yeah, I'm finding. our shipping is pretty pretty good for what uh, for our size, but you got to figure like someone like Amazon, a lot of the time their partner lose. The partners lose money or are borderline losing money on shipments, and we can't afford to do that because we're not Amazon. So I'm sorry, we did do the best we can for shipping price, uh, but uh, that is that is what we pay. It is better than I'd say most, though, for international. Scatter Venture, 75 NT, thank you. Uh, can you tell Joe to reply to Elmore's text messages? You saw that one earlier. We'll figure that out later, I guess. Echo Domus, five dollars. Are you still signing mouse pads? Oh, I got that one already. Hey, why are you doing that, real quick? It's on CPU. No, nobody. Two dollars. What CPU is that? This is the 9980XE. Do you want me to pour at all? No, it's fine. Okay. Oh, we're in CPU test right now. So it's the 9980XE. It's 4.8 gigahertz, and uh, I don't. I think voltage is maybe 1.27 or something like that for core. 1.95 VSIN, and we're just using this 360 radiator to cool the CPU. So it's actually a very simple setup. The point was just. Get something easy. So CLC <laughs> for the CPU so we can control it easily. And then LN2 for the GPU. That looks like the CPU bench will pass, which is good because we set up that uh, clock. That's funny. I think I just got drunk text. Oh, from <laughs> Elmore? OK. No, it's not Elmore. Somebody oh, else. Okay. The scatter venture one. And then we got. <laughs> That's funny. Cole L999, so happy we're getting LN2 testing. Just got my king pin and getting ready for water testing. Well, that's awesome. I did water testing on it already with the stock cooler, and it was honestly pretty fun to work with. So for 2080 Ti's in general, uh, I always end up just disappointed in overclocking a lot of them because you're so limited by power. Yeah. And you will get limited by this eventually. They do have a power limit stock, but on X-Devs, you can pull the XOC BIOS if you want it and push it a bit 
more, you can remove the power limit. Yeah, just be careful. Don't be put careful. it in, into the LN2 BIOS, because if you put it on the LN2 BIOS and run it on water, you have no temp protection. So you want to run it into the middle BIOS. That's the OC, OC BIOS. OC, yep. Because the temp protection on, on water is very important, because if it overheats, and if you don't have temp protection, then you'll actually kill the card. So also, there's a big uh, note to... Be careful with voltages, too, if yeah. you're on water. Don't, yeah. TIN's guide officially, I think, uh, does give a number of not, uh, recommending not going higher than 1.3. Um, yeah, I highly recommend you read it. Read it, read it, yeah. Yeah, and read it in, like, maybe a couple times, because there's a lot of information there, so. Just to be careful, because it's an expensive card, you don't want to kill it. But it is a lot of fun to overclock, though. Especially on LN2. Yes. So you got a score. Yeah, want to take a note? Yes. Our, what was our offset for this? 150? Yep, 150. And then 1500 mem. Yep. So 89.22 for total score, which we don't care too much about, but that is a 900 point improvement. Yeah, but the. 85.62. Yeah, it's almost <laughs> a thousand points more. On the graphic score, 54.08. That's a lot, actually. And 50.51 for GT2. So GT1, GT2, GT2 tends to be more memory uh, focused, and GT1 is more core focused versus memory. Our improvement. And uh, I guess we'll run GPU-Z for one of these so we can see the frequency during yeah, the run. Yeah, I'll do it. You want me to do this one and I'll just bump it? Yeah, let's do that. How much you want to bump on core? Uh, we're at 150, so you want to do like just 175 or something? That's fine. So the improvement in score was about 13% from that. Very low effort overclock. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll have GPU Z open and we'll run it in windowed mode. Yeah, and then we can keep an eye on the GB frequency. Memory clocks 2125 megahertz. Don't want to get it too cold. <laughs> There's a lot of Vaseline on the card as it is now. That's what we're using. It's basically all the way back. Uh, almost to the power connectors because we actually put the heat sinks back on just to make sure because uh, I noticed when you start getting really cold the uh, heat sinks will start getting some ice on them and stuff so you want to make sure you protect it right, as right. much as possible so GPU Z, GPU Z is open I'm trying to see if we have how's normal chat going I'm checking over on the chat xdevs 10 says die temp is key temperature but you can't measure it easily that is Definitely true. We have a, a thermocouple in the LN2 pot, yep. in the bottom of the pot. We have one of his thermocouplers, too, which are actually really on point. One of, uh, yeah, Kingpin. I really only use them. They're kind of a pain because they're so thick, but they're really accurate. I mean, I swear by them. The, so. I guess the biggest thing, too, is how well they detect cold. So yeah. um, we use thermocouples that are really, really small. They're extremely uh, skinny. And the point is we put them on, like, stock coin between a MOSFET and a yep. thermal pad, so you want it to be skinny. But for something like this, the uh, ours I don't think are, I don't think they can detect quite as low. Well, yeah, these are just, I mean, they're, yeah, you can't put in on anything tiny. Yeah, it's, right. it's impossible to do. But they're good for LN2 pots and stuff. Yeah, they're very good for LN2 pots. Chat says we are doing very well. Well, I'm glad you've selected Dark 99 Light 99 as your official <laughs> spokesman for all of chat. Uh, I do have, by the way, some of the stuff linked below just on Amazon or wherever. So like the uh, these Stanley Cups we use for LN2 um, are ex I like them a lot. And then you just buy any thermos for the one Joe's pouring out of if you wanted to get into this. And uh, also the Kingpin Icon uh, LN2 pot I linked in the description if anyone is is really serious about it and wants to to pick that up. But yeah, the I mean the the new pot's kind of for the newer cards too. I mean it's for the old cards too. But it I think the old one I don't know if it comes with. I don't even know if he has any more of the old ones. But I don't know. I didn't look on his site, but the icon is definitely does, it's a nice pot. If you wanted something cheaper, though, he does have the Kingpin paste over there, the the blue paste, blue goo uh, that we use on the video card and on the CPU. I swear I have some hidden in my beard <laughs> from yesterday. I could have sworn like a bunch went in and... You take a shower and just all this blue yeah, comes yeah, out. Yeah, it's kind of weird. <laughs> kind of awkward on a whole new level. <laughs> Yeah, so we're at 2280 on the core. <coughs> Running 20, 2280, okay. Yeah, 2280. 2280 megahertz right now. Someone complained about the background noise. I mean, you know, we've got loud fans running and we're pouring LN2, so. 
it's not gonna be like studio levels of quiet, sorry. Yeah, it's kinda difficult to work with. We can keep our keep our voices up a bit and that'll probably help. Uh, apparently Linus is streaming water cooling a mouse or something right now. But we're doing Should we L into a mouse? <laughs> L into a mouse, yeah. <laughs> I don't see their stream. Maybe it's on Twitch or something. Whatever. Well, I looked for it. Sorry, guys. Uh, hey, Steve, were the white and blue mouse pads signed in black? Yes, on the white part in the top right corner away from where you're going to be using the mouse. Which one? Kingpin here? Is no, no, here? no. The one Elmore says. Scatterbencher. I think someone's a little drunky. Oh, is that? <laughs> okay. I didn't see it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. I see. Uh, okay, cool. So I... Too much bass would joke. Uh, yeah, I don't get it. I don't either. Maybe it's my voice. It's your voice. Super chats. So, got one from uh, Silver Husco. Two dollars. Howdy from Texas. What is the CPU for today? It is a 9980XE. Scatter Venture. Elmore says the main reason you overclock higher with helium is because it's funnier with the higher pitched voices. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer for every time someone says helium. Yeah. Because we get that comment quite a bit. Yeah. So scores, we got a score in. 84.43 for the GPU score. And what is that, 175 and uh, 1500? Yep. So 84.43. It's actually lower than that. That is actually lower, but that's... We that's were, because we're running in windowed. We're right? running windowed with GPU-Z open, so yeah. that's not really... Well, actually, I won't log that one. because Yeah, not, let's not log it. But our frequency was uh, 2280 megahertz. That's the part we care about, just to give people an idea where it was. Yeah, we'll just bump up to another one. And yes, so 2280 on a... 2080 Ti is actually very far from where we're going to end up today, but much higher than you'll get on every 2080 Ti, typically. Card is getting frozen. Tell that big guy to start actual overclocking. That's from x -Devs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Blame Steve. Should we do the, uh, should we, should we address the comment that we were talking about this morning? The Which one? liquid nitrogen overclocking is pointless. What's the point? Oh, my goodness. So there was a comment about, we'll talk about this more at Computex, too, I think, with my, my plan. But I think it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Briefly, though, there was a comment like, what's the point of LN2 overclocking? You can't play games with it. And I think the response to that is, what's the point of playing games? It has the same point. It's fun. When you play games, you're actually, and I don't mean to make you feel bad, but this is how I feel, too. You're actually achieving nothing. So... In reality, you're just playing games for fun. And this is just overclocking for fun. We, are, we too, are functionally doing nothing of value for society right now. So to answer your question. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I love that comment. Yeah. <laughs> Get that chicken running, someone says. Get that chicken running. Yeah. The chicken clocking. Doing some chicken clocking. Frozen beard hair is the best hair. So we got a couple more orders. Thank you for the store orders. As always, they help significantly with streams. Uh, so the mouse pads. We got a blue and white and a graph logo shirt. Thank you for that order from Dale in the UK. We got a, uh, let's see, Philip in Austria. Picked up a mod mat. Thank you for picking one of those up. The large mod mat, the four foot by two foot mat with the uh, ESD grounding strap and connection to actual ground. And a lightweight raglan uh, hoodie, which is our two-tone hoodie. Got another one from Kevin in Norway, just like yesterday, all over the world. That's always really, really cool to see that. Yeah. So Kevin in Norway picked up a blue and black mouse pad and then uh, cobalt blue beer glass from us. I think there is actually a good amount of interest. There's there's a good amount of interest in more signed mouse pads. Do we want to try and do we want to try and sign them before you go to the airport? That's like, fine. Do more today. Sure, why not? Okay, I have to be careful about not overselling what we have, but uh, we have a limited amount of, of stock here before Joe, Joe leaves. But um, so okay, yeah, I'll, I'll keep an eye on the inventory, and um, actually I'll just set the inventory now to make sure we don't 
sell beyond what we can sustain today. But um, I guess there's, there's enough interest here. I didn't think that many people would care. But if you want to pick up a mouse pad again, the, just the blue and black. I, I only really have blue and black. I have like 50 extra white and blue here. So if you order it, we'll sign it, but only up till 50. Blue and black, uh, I've got a bit more of. So I have like uh, maybe 100, 120 of them or something. So we should be good. Uh, so if you pick one of those up, we'll, we'll both sign it at the end of the stream and ship it out to you. I did not know there was that much interest in them, so. Uh, Everybody loves mouse pads, bro. They were very popular yesterday. I just figured figured uh, all the people watching yesterday would be watching today, but it might be a different crowd. My hand's going to hate you, but. Yeah, that could be taken a lot of different ways. Yeah. That'll, that'll, be, <laughs> that'll be clipped out of context later, and you'll regret saying it. Awkward. <laughs> so let me adjust the inventory here to make sure we're good to go. And if you do pick up a mouse pad, we'll go ahead and sign it. Thank you for the continued interest in those. But we are, let's see, that should be, that puts us well within stock. So, all right, yeah, so if you pick up a mouse pad, uh, especially black and blue, we will sign them today. All right, Time Spy is running. Yeah, it's about to finish up. It's run the CPU test. CPU test right now. What are, what's your offsets? I jumped it up 25 from the last one. Up tw So we're at On the a core. 200 offset now? Forget now. 25 megahertz I'll higher. I'll show you. I'll find it in a second. We should talk about memory too. You want to talk about uh, why memory overclocking is important on this a bit, I guess? Well, it's the type of modules that are on the card. The Samsung modules are way more, are way better than the originals. They also help on the own too, too. Are we lower than last time? Or are we higher? Uh, from the previous score? The yeah, previous score was. was a 150 offset 1500. Is the previous one I logged or 85, 62 Yeah, we're points. at 200. And you're at 86. No, 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 it's no right. that's increased. No, yeah. it's, it's perfect. Okay, cool. Now is the windowed mode. Cool. So. Do you want to keep track of what it is? Yes. Let me take a note of that. So this was a plus 200 offset. Yep. 1500 memory. Everything else is the same. And then 9044. Which is a bit of an increase, not much. 8695, hmm. uh, 54, 84. 84, and then 5136. 5136. Always oh, got to concentrate on concentrate on the frames. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the frame rate actually is uh, very important here to keep track of because, as Joe uh, Chicken Clock Joe was exploring yesterday. Well, the big thing I guess was trying to make sure what we're doing is affecting the right thing. Yeah. So for memory overclocking, you were just running GT2 back to back, right? Yeah. GT2 seems to be much harder. That's where the issues were coming through. So right. if I ran GT2, I could run GT1 pretty easily. So I was just testing to kind of make it quicker. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Instead of messing around with GT1 always passing and then GT2 failing, I might as well just run GT2. So that's kind of what I was doing. So what was, uh, what are we doing now? 225? Let me update this text. Mouse pads bought during stream will be signed. Okay, so that's updated. Thank you again for expressing the interest. Uh, like I said, I wasn't going to continue that today, but we'll go ahead and do it because there were a lot of people who wanted to make sure they get one. So before Joe flies out, we will sign more of them. Uh, okay, what's chat saying? Can the mod mat function as a good mouse pad? We don't advertise it as a mouse pad because it's not. It's got a really grippy surface, which is meant for just like holding screws. Uh, they, I mean, you drop a screw and it basically stays in place, which is really nice, but it is super grippy. Clearly, we, we're using a mouse on it, and it's like, you it's can, fine, but we, I wouldn't say buy it for that purpose. You might want to buy one of our mouse pads that's signed by us and put that on top of the mod mat. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the, I guess. Double trouble. Yeah, I guess if you want to use it as a mouse pad, basically expect some rolling resistance. So if you like those, uh, like, aluminum rough mouse pads, then you might be fine with it. Which one are you reading? Let's go 2400, 13, minus 100, guys. We already know, Tim. It's not like we haven't read it before. Oh, what is he saying? He <laughs> no, he wants us to go to 2400. Oh, OK. So he's, he's kind of like, he's like, come on, run it all the way. Tim just wants to go to bed is what he wants. Yeah. What is it? get, it's like 2 AM over we there. We have a whole stream to run, man. We yeah. can't just do everything and then say we're done. Yeah, we already went over this, Tim. Come out here. 
<laughs> Join us for a stream. This is the best. Joe knows how to build suspense. I've been waiting on part two of his overclocking video for <laughs> months, though. <laughs> so true. That's actually really good. Yeah, that is an awesome one. <laughs> no, that's true. I'm actually going to be working on that next week. So. Speaking of Joe's overclocking videos, uh, so I do have Joe linked in the description below for Bearded Hardware. And you should subscribe to him if you have not already. Uh, he's, he's linked down in the description. Or you can, if you want to you know, support Joe while you're supporting us too, you can pick up our, our mouse pads on store.gamersnexus.net. I'll try and shout your name out during the stream. No guarantees on that. But we will be signing them after the uh, interest surge. We'll be signing them today. And then Joe has this shirt on beardedhardware.com if you want to support Joe. Man, you got that. You got that. Uh, Marketing game on point. Hey, I try. <laughs> I need a hat. Need a hat? Yeah, that's my next thing. Well, I gotta get the sweatshirt done, but one thing at a time. <laughs> Is the hat gonna have a beard on it too? Oh, yeah, it's probably just gonna have the beard logo. Will it be flipped upside down or is it? Have it sideways. I could. <laughs> uh, forehead I beard. I feel some more Alan too. And the beard's not included, by the way. Beard's <laughs> not. <laughs> no, but you should include, like, uh, you know what you need to do is get a really big sponsorship with, like, Dollar Shave Club. Tell them, tell them you'll shave your beard for, like... A mil? Yeah, like a million dollars or something. <laughs> I'm not sure you want to see that. <laughs> There's a whole lot of awkward. <laughs> There's a reason why I have a beard, and I'll probably never shave it. Get that... That baby face overclocking? Yeah, I, I drop at least like 15 years. <laughs> oh, yeah. How, mu how much more can we annoy Tim? Uh, significantly, I would imagine. Joe's overclocking is as good as my timing for shipping stuff to Steve. <laughs> as good as his timing for what? <laughs> shipping uh, the stuff to you. Oh. Roman. Oh, Roman. Did yeah. Roman say that? Yes. Rowan's in chat. That's Rip Roman. Where is he? Dare Bowers. <laughs> I like that. Dare Bowers in chat. Everyone say hi to Dare Bower. He's on YouTube as well. You should check him out. Go Google D E R Oct A U E R. Uh, Dare Bower. And uh, Oct being eight, just to be clear there. He's, uh, yeah, Joe's overclocking us as good as my timing for shipping stuff to Steve. I think we're going on three months. Three months? Yeah, three months. For what is he sending you? Something magical? Uh, one Carbonaut. Oh, is think. that what you're waiting for? He's personally making... He's been, he's been sewing it by hand together. See, that's worse than my part two of the overclock. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. Rowan's, Rowan's a cool guy. We'll hopefully uh, see Rowan at Computex in the next couple of weeks, actually. We'll all be in Taiwan. You're going to be there, too. Hopefully not. Taiwan. Yeah, I'll be at Computex. Yeah, so... Uh, I'll be at the G-Skill booth for the... Overclocking competition. I'm one of the judges. So. That's right. This guy judging. Yeah, I'll actually be covering a bunch of the, the contest. So on my channel during Computex, you'll see a bunch of overclocking hardcore and me judging and messing around. So. Yeah. Which I love to do, obviously. And I, I'm planning to come uh, film some videos with the extreme overclockers. So you'll see, you'll see Roman on our channel again. Unfortunately. <laughs> So. I'm sure I'll, I'll start right, the video. Ready? Yeah, so 9135 for total score. Yes, what sir. Is this? What is our frequency right now? Uh, 25 more than the other one. So 225, 225. 1500, yeah. 9135. Just trying to piss Tannen off as much as possible. <laughs> 8793, uh, 5554, 5187. All right, cool. All right, let's chicken clock some more. <laughs> So that is just to kind of uh, to make sure people appreciate this. You know, we're approaching 2,300 megahertz at this point without really any effort. And yeah. Not much temp either. About minus 50, yeah. minus 60. Yeah, and I'll point out again that software is incorrect at past minus 40. So the yeah, reader... Yeah, don't really look at that. Yes, yeah, so we're minus 56 right now. And where are, you, where are you bringing it down to when you're actually running? What's your target? Same thing? Yeah, it's just around the same thing. Okay. We're not pushing it too hard. I'm, I'm going to probably start increasing. I don't want the card to get too cold. Right. Because then we'll have a bunch of issues. Usually I start off much higher, but that wouldn't be fun on the stream. So. Yeah. It's the anticipation in the stream that makes you watch the whole thing. So, just saying. <laughs> Plus, you almost you get to see me fail. Get to see you fail. Well, yeah. that's, that's all Roman wants to see. Oh, of course. In chat right now. 
Oh yeah, they save. I think, is Rowan talking about thermal paste right now? I saw him say just use 10 grams per application and you're good. <laughs> Which, I mean. We do have a lot on I that. guess <laughs> if you're in the business of selling thermal paste, more is better. Yeah, just advertise it more. <laughs> just use more. Oh, nice. Pace in chat says, Gamers Nexus is dangerous. Bought a T-Rex pot last night and I'm Sweet. trying to be sensible and not go crazy and order a 2080 Ti KPE. That's trying pretty, not to? Yeah, trying not to order the KPE. But you know what's a, a good starting point if you haven't done LN2 overclocking before? This is my first time doing LN2 on a GPU, and I'm not even doing anything. Uh, <laughs> if, if it's your, That's for sure. If it's your yeah. first time, um, we were talking about this yesterday, you, you might want to maybe get one of your old video cards you're not using anymore, or, or buy a used one on eBay or something. Yeah, I'm not sure you want to break your overclocking virginity on a brand new KPU. Kingpin? Yeah, yeah no. I mean, I would first work with something else. I would still buy the Kingpin card because it, it is a badass card. But um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'd I'd be very careful. I uh, yeah. Because it it is possible to kill it. I mean, you do something wrong, or you get it. You don't insulate right, and card goes poof. And yeah. EVGA is not going to be responsible for it. Obviously. No. So actually, do you know what the you know that ten password protects the XOC BIOS? You know what he sets the password to? Oh no. It's uh, so I installed the XOC BIOS on here. So that we could do this with no power limit, and it comes in a password, uh, password protected, like directory or whatever file format, and the password is I promise not to RMA this card or something like that. <laughs> That's actually really good. <laughs> Tin's always creative. It's like basically, He's a good dude. basically a signed agreement at that point. Yeah, but basically, if you were gonna put this on here, you're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is the keyboard in the middle? Someone wants to know about your keyboard. This is my keyboard. I've had this thing for like 11 years, something like that. It's an IBM ThinkPad. Uh, it's basically just a PS2 keyboard. I don't even use the mouse. It's just, it just functional for just for overclocking, just changing stuff. Very portable, too. Yeah, I can throw it in the backpack, and it's not an issue. It's not like a, it's just a convenient thing. I, br I brought it to Taiwan like hundreds of times, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, like we said previously. Uh, well, when you're bringing stuff to Taiwan, it's quite difficult. I mean, I always yeah. load up too. I always bring up too much stuff. Oh, well, you gotta, you got the balance to it, making sure you have enough clothes for being in a oh. really high humidity place for over a week. You know? Well, I'm used to that because where I live, Florida, it's very similar actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think they're like the same spot on the equator. Or whatever. What is Roman saying? Roman's talking to someone. He says we actually decided to replace Cryonaut completely instead, so it will stay the same name, but will have better performance. Some are already out in the wild all by end of 2019. Yeah, I think that he has a new pace, too. Yeah. Oh, cool. I look forward to getting it in uh, maybe like 2025 or something when Rowan can get around to shipping the next package. Uh, it's <laughs> probably going to be more like 2030. <laughs> Rowan and chat. Uh, let's see. Super chats. Get some of those. Oh, yeah. Uh, like I was saying, I got to get Rowan on camera for. Um, for Computex too, so we'll we'll try and find something cool at his booth to show off. Start off the video in one of three potential languages, like we always do. See if I can <laughs> throw him off. Maybe, maybe start with. Uh, start Come on, with you're giving him hints now. Yeah, you that's don't true. want to leave. That's true. You can't give him too much info because <laughs> you know he's going to try to prepare. That's right. He's going to study his German, make sure he remembers it, <laughs> <laughs> so he can reply to me. V Gates, there, Bauer. <laughs> Was Max du heute? So we got, uh, who, who is our last one we read? Dan Pellegrino, $11. I recognize that name. Love the stream. Thanks again for the MSI shot glasses. That's why I recognize the name. Uh, keep at it, guys. We need good XOC content like this. Well, thank you for watching and glad that you got the, uh, the shot glasses. We had MSI sent us and everyone else shot glasses for a holiday thing. And it was like, I didn't get one. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's like, I don't. I don't really want these, but I don't want to throw them out. They're, they're, someone can use them, and they're kind of cool looking. So we sent them out to someone in our Patreon Discord. Awesome. Roman says, ha, 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 oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> is Tin freaking out yet? Tin is, uh, where is? No, Mr. Banana, my boss is telling me my v -core. Oh, I don't know what he's talking about. I thought it was Tin for a sec. Hey, Steve, do you know, do you oh, happen right, to finished. know whether Yvonne murdered Linus after that joke during the roast. I'm concerned he's been replaced. Uh, I think they were fine after the, it was, 
<laughs> it was a little difficult to watch, particularly uh, Yvonne and Linus roasting each you other. You want to take these down real quick? Yes. 91.86 for the total score. What's our 250 offset? 1500 memory. 91.86. 250. 250 offset, okay. Yeah. And 88, 51, 50, 53, So just to give point of reference, let's get a close-up on those scores, uh, if you don't mind, Andrew, behind the camera. And then our original baseline, no overclocking, just cold, which does influence the score, was at um, 75, 77 for the total GPU score. So 88, 51 versus that is an improvement thus far of about 17%. And then GT2 alone, we're at 55.27 FPS versus our original score baseline of 44.48. And that improvement is about 25, 24%. And then finally, uh, GT1, where core intensive 55.83 FPS, moved to uh, from 48.11, 5.83, 48.11. So that is an improvement of about 16%. So we're going to jump to 275. 275. I, I would like to get another uh, GPU-Z shot at some point, maybe on the next bump to show the yeah, we'll frequency. Do next one. Well, yeah, we can do it now. Tin says, I'm waiting. I, he says, I am all waiting for 2400 megahertz. <laughs> all, of, all of the tins. All of, all all of the of tins? Him. Yeah. We did what we, well, <laughs> I'm not going to say, but I knew that was going to happen with him. <laughs> Just saying. All right, so what do we have for Super Chats? I'm trying to keep up better today than yesterday. I'm doing okay so far. <laughs> you had a tough time yesterday. So yesterday was a lot of Super Chats to keep up with. It was brutal. Uh, we should go over, let's go over, uh, after I get a couple of these, oh. let's go over the task bench, the bench components again and show some of that off now that it's frosty. So we got Unexpected at 1440p, five dollars, five euros. Thank you very much for the support, for paying for some of our LN2 this weekend. Oh, that is the OC keyboard from Joe. Now it's getting really serious. That is right. That's right, when that comes out. <laughs> Renair, uh, Renair, two dollars. So much backseat OSHA here. Oh, in the chat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we talked about that yesterday. Yeah. Or we, I don't even know if that was on the chat. Enjoy your OC streams, thank you. Scatterbencher, $30. Will bearded hardware be at G-Skills Computex booth? Without a doubt. And judging? And judging the competition. As and well as people. It's not just the, people that you judge. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be doing some benching, too, with uh, EVGA, too. Nice. So On EVGA day? On EVGA day. So it should be fun. Tin, tin wouldn't come out and do it? He better be there, actually. I don't know. I, Show up, Tin. I think he will be there. Yeah, I'll... Uh, Tin, if you're at the booth, send me an email, Tin. Uh, let me know if you're going to be at Computex at all. Otherwise, we'll come see you guys in the OC lab or something. Yeah, I'm still we'll waiting for my invite, Tin. <laughs> Actually, I'll, I I'll smuggle Joe in in our bag, right. open the camera bag, and you just jump out. Good luck with that. Where's the invite? <laughs> you're going to need a big camera bag. <laughs> Twisted Hardware, $2. Steve, snaps fingers. Linus, I don't feel so good. Joe Colossa, $5. Saw a vid from a big YouTuber. Jay, not sure. He said cards sold by AMD and NVIDIA are binned and usually perform better. Is this true? Uh, there's no real... What was, it, what was the question? Are cards sold by AMD and NVIDIA binned? I can tell you with absolute certainty that that is not true with the AMD cards, and it is probably minimally true with the NVIDIA cards. Um, well, I wouldn't say bin. The, I mean, they still have to check each GPU before pre -selected, they send them. Pre-selected, I guess. Pre-select, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't say binned. I know, say, for instance, like the kingpin cards, I, I'm pretty sure they're going through GPUs to make sure it's a high quality enough for the card. Yes. Yeah. Because it is a, it's a killer card. I mean, that's not the only good well, thing about the card. You don't put a garbage GPU yeah, on. Yeah, well, why would you want to buy a, a spend yeah. all that money for a good GPU and it be a crappy GPU? Well, and EVGA, there? too, is spending a lot of money like for the PCB and the BRM and all that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, why, why bring it down? But, like, NVIDIA and AMD reference directly, no, not that is not really true. Actually, we have a video coming up on that, uh, hopefully, before Computex. Let me get, like, two more before I move on to filling some LN2 for Joe. Uh, NZ Odin, $5. When is the Madrina sponsored roast of Steve going to happen? Probably never, because we don't have the shill skills of Linus to somehow figure out how to turn the word roast into an advertisement just for coffee. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty good skills. Uh, Paul Dodd, $5. 
Forget signing. Can I get a strand of Steve's hair or Joe's beard if I buy a mod mat? Also, why didn't Steve sing when Joe did? <laughs> well, because we don't no want to hear those things. That. Yeah. Nobody asked. Some things for that. in life just should not be done, <laughs> and that is one of them. Now into. Yeah, so we're at 2385. For the frequency? Yep. So we're almost 2400 megahertz. Can you, can you make sure we torture 10 as much as possible and get like? Let's Should do I do like 2399? I will definitely do that. <laughs> Just to have fun. If we could do it, yeah. So 2385 for the frequency so far is pretty damn high. Again, the these cards 2080 Ti's that is uh, without any special BIOS or anything typically stop at around. 2050, maybe sort of towards 2100. So we are much higher than we typically are. Yeah, you won't see that on water ever. No. No, definitely not. If not, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, it's software's bugs or Just something. Just doesn't work. So we got a store order from uh, Emily in New Hampshire. Picked up a mouse pad. Thank you. Got an order from Jeff in British Columbia. Picked up a mouse pad as well. Let me read another one. And an order from David in Philadelphia. Picked up a black and blue mouse pad. Thank you. Like I said, we'll sign those up until we run out of them today. I have set the stock so that we can't sell more than we can sign. So once it's out of stock, then you know that we're out. Uh, it's, it won't be restocked until Joe goes home, and then they won't be signed after that. But it looks like we do have uh, enough of them left for this stream, hopefully. Yeah, I'm going to. We're, we're good right now. There's probably no reason to take this score down, so. Okay. What would you run for this one? Just GPZ? Yeah, I ran the GPZ mode? just okay. to make sure that we're doing it, because it's going to be lower, uh, yeah. obviously. So how do we mess with 10 more than <laughs> usual? Well, while you figure that out, let me go over the bench components over here. Sure. Um, so let's show off the KP card as best we can. It's kind of buried under stuff, but... Uh, LNC pot up here is frosted over right now, and we've got blue shop towel, actually, which I've, I've actually linked to this in the description because I figured, why not, if you want to pick up blue shop towel. Dude, blue, blue shop towel is like, is like the hardcore <laughs> overclocked towels. Towel, yeah. Yeah, they're amazing. Like, you could do a lot with them. <laughs> it I is mean, actually. Do I, not put down the blue shop that's towel. That's right. That's right. There's a lot you can do with them. So we've got uh, the KP card with the, uh, the VRM heatsink still on it. They're actually pretty cold to the touch right now. And the fan is not spinning because it doesn't need to. The whole card is really cold. What are we at right now for temperature on there? Uh, about minus 95. Minus 95. Yeah, I started pulling it down a little bit more because we're, we're starting to pick up on clocks. Right. And the thermocouple, so it's coming in back here. You can't really see it from that angle, but it's the thermocouple is going in under the LN2 pot like that, and it ends up right behind the GPU, which is back here. And actually, you can see where the GPU is uh, by looking at where the big rectangle of frost Cold. is. Yeah, on the back of the card. So that's roughly where the GPU is. Oh, I said uh, I tried to set 14, but we're at it, it, it rounded up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're at 2400. Then. 2400. Yeah, I'm megahertz. gonna kill this though and just actually do a real run though. So um, the rest of the bench, I've just thrown a TT Flow 360 on here because it was easy, and I needed a 360 to get. A basic 4.8 gigahertz overclock on the 9980XE. I'll take credit for this one. So Joe has been doing all the GPU stuff here today. Uh, I did set that overclock last night, and we've got memory at 4,000 megahertz. Um, CPU, the mesh is at, I think I stopped at 32 for now. And so we're pretty happy with that CPU base overclock with just water. Trident Z Royals for the memory. Um, overclocked pretty well. Uh, X299 Dart for the board, and then two power supplies. So this might interest some of you. Yeah, we always do one power supply per, especially on a car that, an yeah. extreme car. Yes. Card. So uh, this 1600 watt Corsair power supply is only for the GPU, and that's plugged into its own circuit, 20 amp circuit, so we're not going to trip that. And then the CPU, 9980XE is, is certainly a power hog on its own. Uh, it's plugged into a 1600 watt EVGA power supply, also plugged into its own circuit. And then to get them to work together, it's buried back there, but actually it's right here. It is. We just plugged in a, a jumper. I mean, you could do this with a paper clip. It's basically what this is. But it's just a jumper, and it bridges the two pins. Uh, so it's a green pin and then a ground, a black pin. And you bridge those two, and the power supply will start when you hit the power button. And Joe, I guess the trick here is you want the GPU power supply on 
first. first. Yeah, otherwise they, it's just not gonna. I don't know if there's an issue. There shouldn't be an issue with in this setup. I know with older cars there was some issue if you didn't do that. You could blow something, but you, obviously you, you can't boot into the operating system if the card's not on. Right. And it will it will do some when it's reading in the BIOS to try to detect the card, it, it won't read it. So you need to make sure you do the GPU first and then the motherboard second. Right, right. Andrew, are you getting any scratching on the mic from Joe's beard? Okay, cool. I saw it hitting the mic, so just making sure. <laughs> so then the rest of the setup, I guess, is all just the LNT stuff. And uh, it's not too bad, really. We have three of these. I think they are. 16, I don't remember how many, I don't know it's more than 16 ounces. I don't remember how many no, ounces. No, they were definitely was. more than 16 ounces. Yeah, it's ounces. definitely more than 16. Then we have a 30 liter doer over here. Two 180s, that might be like a 32 or something. I don't know. Two 180 liter <laughs> cans. Do not microwave. <laughs> Who the hell would put one of these in a microwave? Do that to warm the LN2 up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's throw an LN2 and then throw it all in a microwave. <laughs> That'd be a great video. So this one's been slowly leaking. <laughs> Um, we talked about this yesterday, but again, LN2 cylinders are to some extent supposed to leak because they're pressurized and they'll explode if they don't, like there's too high pressure. But this one's damaged and the inner container constantly shifts. Yeah, I got mad before and I had dented it up. Yeah, that's right. I threw it. Not really. Like I, like I said in the first <laughs> video, yeah. yeah. Not really, yeah. And then... Uh, but this one's almost empty, I think. The other one is completely full, though, so we're in good shape for today. And I might have some extra to do another one of these after Joe leaves, so be all on my own, Joe. That'd be fun. I'll be watching. Then you can be in chat. Oh, I'll be critiquing you. Giving me, tr yeah, <laughs> talking trash. I'll be the tin. The tin and of the chat. The bower. <laughs> what is... Someone says, no enthusiast uses AMD Junks LMAO. <laughs> uh, okay. So that mentality is so bad. Like, because people do that on both, both of the, the components. You get, like, the AMD fans who do the same thing. I'm a performance fan. I, we just, so I, I guess, like, to say no enthusiast uses AMD, you've got Buildzoid in the chat who, like, does a lot of AMD XOC. We just did AMD yesterday. We just did AMD Ryzen Extreme Overclocking yesterday. Uh, you know, Joe, I think it's time to admit that we're not enthusiasts. No. Nope. What are we then? Posers. Probably. Actually, just definitely. like just like Roman. Just like Roman. <laughs> He's a big poser now. Doesn't bench anymore. Doesn't bench anymore. Just raking in all of that, all of that thermal grizzly thermal paste. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. He's driving his GTR. Sometimes. In the woods. Sometimes correctly. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. Der Bauer cleans his dishwash his motherboard with dishwashers. Uh, someone, I guess they're talking in chat about how to clean these. You know, we should mention that too. So we've got the video card under a lot of Vaseline uh, for insulation purposes. Yeah, there's a lot of Vaseline on it. To make sure there's no, um, no none of the water from the LNT pot drips down and short stuff. Should I note that score? Yeah. Let's do that real quick. We what is our run. what's our offset? Uh, oh, I would just put it's basically two eighty nine. I was trying to get uh, oh twenty three ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah two eighty nine is not gonna work. Fifteen hundred. It'll round. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm just gonna go to three hundred now. Ninety two sixty nine. I'll do three twenty five. Just what were the scores? Ninety two sixty nine total. Oh, hold on one sec. Slowing me down, Joe. 89.70, uh, 56.49, and 5305. Our GT2 went down that time. How much, though? Two FPS. Two? Yeah. Ooh, that could be a bad sign. <laughs> Sometimes when you get too cold or you're benching too long, usually what we want to try to do is bench as quickly as possible, but we can't do that on stream. So, right. um, a lot of the times, the memory can start getting flaky with all the cold. It just basically just water build up and right. So, Der Bauer is still in chat. If you don't know who Der Bauer is, go subscribe to the subscribe to the XOC guys on YouTube. It's a good community that's been growing. So Der Bauer has got a channel. Actually, Hardcore Overclocking has a channel. He does some of the PCB analysis on our channel. Joe's got a channel, Bearded Hardware, and we'll be posting it. What's your next video plan, Apex? 
uh, yeah, the part two, the motherboard, not the game. Apex. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm the motherboard. Yeah. So, yeah, the overclocking guy. We're gonna go over uh, CPU clocking and then memory clocking. Nice. So, so if you want some, uh, is it gonna be like tutorial style or just explanation of what the settings are? Or? Uh, probably a little bit of both. Just cool. kind of show you and then explain how and kind of just give you tips on what you need to do to memory clock. Right. Because most people, if I tell you, okay, you can do this, this, and this, you don't know how to do it. So yeah, you it's just also an introduction to memory clocking in general of what you need to do. Like, I won't give you too much info, but yeah. it'll be good. I've yeah. talked to a, a bunch of guys. I'm like, ah, well, how would you explain it? How would you think? Because I don't want to make it too complicated. Memory's, uh, memory, I think, is pretty hard to... That's That seems like kind of the last barrier where people will... The problem is, is you can go way too in-depth, yeah. and then you kind of lose a person. Yeah, so I think if you start talking like tertiary time, if, yeah. if someone starts reading a guide and they see tertiary time, it's too much. People are like, "Yeah, I don't want to watch that." So right. it, the whole point is to try to make it fun and interesting, and which is very difficult to be yeah. honest. I know pretty much every YouTuber or tech tuber has tried to explain yeah, yeah. memory, and it's just not that good. It's not easy though. Like, yeah, it's more of an overclocker's perspective of like, kind of how do you overclock? Like, we, how do you get into starting to yes, do memory clocking? Yeah, we did a memory timings for primary and secondary, I think, video with animations that Andrew did. And that was really good, but even that, you know, we had to cut it after secondary and split everything off into a separate video. Yeah, which still you get too live. complicated. So that's why I'm gonna try to dumb it down and just give you the basics that you need to go. Shouldn't be hard for in. you to dumb it down. What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember that too. I'm sure you will. Remember it for Computex. Oh, trust me. I've seen Joe throw LN2 at people. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been known to do that a bunch, actually. Especially <laughs> down your shirt. Hey. The back. <laughs> <laughs> Got an order from John from the UK. Picked up a mouse pad. Thank you. Like I said, we will, after seeing the interest originally uh, in this stream, we'll sign what we have. Uh, and I have set the stock to equal the amount of pads, mouse pads we have here to sign. So. If, if they're out of stock, then that's it. But we'll sign everything up until that point. So Joe and I will get those before end of the end of the day. Yeah, my hand's going to hate you. <sighs> Der Bauer says, oh, no, he's just talking to someone else. OK, talking to Richie CC in chat. He's too All good right. for us now, huh? He is too good for <laughs> us. He doesn't want to interact. We're boring <laughs> him. Not really. <laughs> uh, Paul Dodd. For, oh, I got that one already. Bazinga X, five dollars. How bloody will the war between you and Paul be after his video? Well, uh, we'll see him at Computex, and then you won't see him again. Next one, Johnny Olsen, <laughs> Norwegian Kroner, fifty, I think. Uh, I'll buy a signed mod mat and mouse pad right now on stream. If you promise to grow beard the rest of the year, Steve. <laughs> I think you should. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's it gets, funny. It gets annoying as is. Uh, it's not Darian, $2. Best way to get Tim off a of, uh, thermal paste off of the mod match. Freeze with LN2, question mark. We have some on this mod pad. I don't know that freezing it's going to... No, I just see it. See, it seemed to work pretty it well. It did work well. Yeah, Where's I was kind of impressed that it's over here. I'll grab it. Thank uh, you. So Joe was doing this. I, I'm not going to... So first of all, a quick note. I don't know... Officially, if this will cause any damage to the paint, but we don't think it does if you wipe it off right away. KP's paste is gone. Yeah, I had some issues on mine. So I was like, you know what, CRC, I use it for paste on motherboards and GPUs yeah. and well, I mean, pretty much memory slots and everything. I was like, it's gonna work on the mod mat. That. That's a pretty good job. It actually does work pretty well. I do have to, uh, I'll do some more testing and we'll talk yeah. about it in a video at some point. So the official answer is don't use it yet until we test. Right, because the, that actually it has been a common question of um, how to clean the mod map because people get thrown paste on it, but better than the, everything else. All right, what's your score? Th 9313. Original total score was 8001 for point of reference. So quite a bit improved. And 8987 for GPU. Originally we were 7577. You can do the percent difference math on that. 5691, 52. 89, so we have gone down on the memory score. Yeah, the GT2 is probably because of, I think we need to push the clocks up to 1600. Okay, let's I, do it. I, I'm what was your offset this time? Uh, yeah, I'll test because I got to I think the cold is starting to affect the memory. 
It does that. It actually does it with less with Samsung memory. So right. you have Samsung memory on these cards, which is like a huge, huge clocks, benefit. Clocks better. Oh yeah. yeah, way better, even on Air. So we, yeah, we're at three twenty-five. So you want to go to? We're going to go to three fifty next. Yes. Where's that? Can you bring that up real quick? I just want to look at it. So, okay, yeah. so we're going to go up to 1600 on memory this time? On yeah. 350? I like 1600. It, it seemed to work much better yesterday. You're limiting me, Steve. Yeah, that's what I do. You're limiting me. I'm going to get you some LN2 while you're being dramatic. <laughs> I learned from watching Roman. <laughs> Man, Roman is just taking a beating today. I feel bad for him. So much fun to mess with him. <laughs> He likes to mess with us, too. So I think I do have, is it in the description? I do, though. Rowan can't be too mad, because I have a uh, cryonaut linked in the description. So if you want some of the high-end thermal paste that I use for our overclocks, you can click the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut link in the description. And the bonus is you support Roman at the same time, because uh, he's going to need a lot of cryonaut after all these burns we're giving him today. You can put the crown out on the burn. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at minus 105 now. What is it, plus 400? Minus 105. And what was the plus 400? Oh, nice. Okay. Come on, math, Steve, math. From what, the previous offset? I don't know what our frequency was previously. So if you do... 400. Yeah, you know what the frequency was last time? I didn't check. We'll do it on the next one. I'll do a quick run with GPU-Z on the back. I'm going to see what GT1 does. I'm going to shut 10, 10 up and chat. He says these chicken clockers, which is my new favorite word, these chicken clockers are missing airflow around the card. So just for you, 10. I'll hook up a fan from one of your competitors. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, though. Too much movement. Yeah, that is true. Is there a fat screwdriver over there? There was, but I moved it over there. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Can't have that for the stream, bro. Okay, so we're adding a Maglev 120 fan, and this is just going to help exhaust that LN2 for one right into my face. Hey, Why did you take that off yesterday? Oh, because we were putting it in take the CPU cooler. I was taking a photo. Yeah. Thumbnail photos. We one. actually had that yesterday, and then Steve had to ruin it. And <laughs> Are you happy, Tim? He's always happy, because he's picking on this. <laughs> Just subscribe to Bearded Hardware, someone says. Sweet. He says it's going the wrong direction. Well, I was trying to exhaust the LN2. Uh, do, we not, mean, do we not care about it? exhausting it this time? You want to push air into the card? Well, I'm not sure why you'd really want to say it. If you feel these, these are so cold. It's all cold, right? Yeah. That's but, like, I don't think I'm worried about airflow on the. Well, maybe it's to keep the water off. Is that what it is? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Curious why. Because I was running fine last night. He says, no. No. Wrong fan direction, all guys. Poor Tim. <laughs> it's so much fun. Chicken clock. Why not turkey clock? Duck clock or goose clock? Actually, why not dodo clocks? Chicken clocks are overrated. I agree. <laughs> what is the total power consumption? Not sure, actually. Uh, we should have hooked up a meter. GPU-Z will tell you. I don't know how accurate. Yeah, Ten. but I'd rather do it from the power supply from the wall. itself. Well, yeah. if we shut down, we can do that. But Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Because then the card will get really cold. So, Tin, uh, actual question for you. Do you know if GPU-Z's power consumption reader is, is accurate under this setup? If it is, we'll just open that up to get the power. And uh, if yeah, not... I kind of want to check the clocks anyway. Yeah. We can go over it and see. 
Tim says I'll suffer tomorrow when Vince watches this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a recap too. We'll have a stream recap later with all the end results. How much were your two tanks of LN2 and where were they from? Uh, so the LN2, after I ended up getting discounts that were significant, um, and it was just because they overcharged me originally. Uh, each one was $177 before like the delivery and the taxes. So together they came out to $440. Originally, it's from Airgas. Originally they wanted to charge me at um, $880. And magically out of nowhere, it was cut in half because I think they realized that was BS. Um, so yeah, uh, 170 bucks for one of them. And your local welding supply company can get them to you. If you want it cheaper, if you don't want to go like this, if you don't need this much, you can get a doer like that one over there at 30 liters. And um, that is, you can get them used for like 400 bucks maybe. That was brand new for 600. If you buy them used, just clean them out first. And then you can bring that to your welding supply company and ask them to just fill that. And that'll be much cheaper. And it'll last you like all day, depending on the, the temperature you're dealing with. Has tin commented? Power consumption at 2.4 gigahertz. Oh, nice. He's just giving us the numbers. Yeah, it's even better. So Tin says GPZ is not accurate at this point. Yeah, I figured as much. Yeah, and he says power consumption at 2.4 gigahertz RTX KPE is about 1,000 oh, watts. Mm -hmm. What? No, my last clock was 350. So he says it's about 1,000 watts for the card, and the 9980XE at 4.8 will be about 500 watts. So we're doing about 1,500 watts between the two, which is good that we have two separate power supplies on two separate circuits. Need any more? No. Nope. No, I think I'm good for you. It's from that chicken clocking. That I'm forced to do. It's all Steve's fault. We can start picking it up. All right, let me read some of the super chats. I just saw one that was complaining about not reading them. Uh, let me read through, how many, we don't have, oh, 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 the page just refreshed, we have more than I thought. Uh, <laughs> Let me read through, like, I'll spend maybe the next minute or two doing these. Dennis Rigdon, $2. YouTube gave me a free super chat? Okay, well, best use. Well, thank you very much. We'll, we'll absolutely take the money from YouTube. I still have to look into the free super chats from YouTube. I didn't. Yeah, someone mentioned that yesterday. Yeah, I didn't know they did that. But hey, I mean, if you have YouTube Premium and you get free super chats, I'm not complaining. By all means, give them to us. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Jesse McKenzie, five dollars. Does torch? Oh, this is a good one for you, Joe. Does torching the pot compensate for any contraction that would cause a loose seating, or does it not contract enough to affect anything? No, it's not. It's we torch really to basically just to control the pot better. That's kind of the the short sum of it. Right. So the the thing is, is you got to be careful also on how much you torch because you also build up ice. Okay. Yeah, turning it into water. Yeah, and then that problems. goes into the pot, and that actually causes problems between. Yeah. Fortunately, it's a bit easier to empty this than the CPU pots. You yeah. Just pull the card. You just pull off the card, heat it up real quick. Turn and it upside go. down. Yep. Yeah, we're starting to have issues now. So while you yeah. look into some of that, I'll take a couple more of these super chats. And Andrew. No, actually, that might be it. Andrew, if you want to train the camera on what Joe, Joe's doing, I'll read through these, and they can keep an eye on the settings he's applying. Yeah, I'm just rating the volts to 1.3. We're at 1.25. So Theo Lander, Theo Lander said one dollar, no message. Thank you, Tim Donan, one dollar, no message. Thank you, and Thursday, two dollars. Thank you, Scatter Venture, 75 Taiwan dollars. Is Joe using the Elmore Labs EVC2 for XOC? I think the answer is no today. Uh, Am I using it ever? Or yeah, no. I, I need to talk to about getting one though. Biking with Panda, two dollars. Nice hair. Did you get it from Cable Mod? Boom roasted. You got me. Boom roasted. Better than Linus's roast on me. Uh, two ends. W K. Five dollars. MLS <laughs> goalkeeper. Charlie Lyon equals Kingpin clone? Question mark. Crisp. I don't. I don't know who the goalkeeper is. Sorry. Sorry. Crispin Driver Schroeder, one ninety nine. Did you see a five thousand megahertz memory support for Ryzen three thousand? Uh, I did not see that, and I'm trying not to read the rumors on it. Yeah, you got to remember, there's a, a lot of rumors. Yeah. I remember, what, at CES, everybody was talking about that, and then it was, I mean, yeah. it wasn't that much of a disappointment, but it was kind of like... Well, that's the problem, is people get all hyped on the rumors, and then the company isn't aligning their launch yeah. to the rumors. Yeah, obviously. So mm -hmm. people get disappointed because they built themselves up for something that wasn't 
ready to happen yet. And like, I, I have, I will say that I've seen a lot of in the last um, couple we're of days. Issues. Yeah, I'm gonna have to heat up the car. Okay, I've seen a lot of incorrect uh, numbers about Ryzen 3000 the last few days, so I guess keep that in mind. Yeah, we're gonna basically kill it. Okay, so you're gonna, you wanna actually explain let me what? try. I'm gonna heat up first to see. Okay. Yeah, what Let's I'm gonna do is uh, heat up the. It, the card is very cold. I'm gonna try to go to minus 50 right now. Okay. And then try to see if it's a paste issue or, or something. The card is just too cold. Mind if I kill your mic for a second? Yeah. I'll take some there super chats. So your mic's off for a second. Uh, all right. So JW Dickinson, five dollars. Bought a mouse pad. Still want a beanie. We will work on it once it's getting colder again. I put that on hold because it turned into summer. Uh, Arctic Zap, $20. What temp is the most important with LN2? Pot temp or dye temp? And where is the pot, or, and where in the pot is the temp the most accurate for what you're trying to measure? So I'll let Joe take that as soon as he's done. I will come back to that one. Roy uh, Kozitsky, $2. Uh, $2. Loved the roast of LMG, funny as hell. Thank you very much. And then it burns when internet protocol. It burns when IP, $5, thank you. Are you going to have an overclocking session for the Razor toaster? If, if I can, I'll do it. Don't forget your mic. Uh, Joe, there's a question for you when you're ready. Yeah, what was it again? Can you read it off again? Arctic Zap, $20. Uh, what temperature is the most, there's two. What temperature is the most important with Allen 2, the pot temp or the die temp? Well, the die temp is basically, it will stop reading at like minus 40. So you it's really need the pot temp. So you want to be concerned more with the pot temp at that point. And then this one, same person. And where in the pot is the temp the most accurate for what well, you're trying to measure? Well, it's usually right behind the die. So like, or not right behind. So you can figure, imagine there's, there's a little like, I don't know if it's a plate or you want to call it. It's drilled it's like right into, right behind it. So it, it's pretty accurate. I know on, on the icon that you basically shove it through and it's like right behind. Right in the, the middle actual, of the yeah. GPU, yeah. Um, and I guess let's, let's talk about delta, temperature deltas for a second too, regarding like how you can kind of tell if your paste is going bad, I guess. Uh, well, usually like the minus 40, if this was to be any positive temp, mm -hmm. that would be a problem with paste. Right. So like, you see how it's minus 40? If I were to run and basically see that go to minus 30 or whatever, we know there's a problem if I'm at minus 70 on the actual uh, Thermal hot temp. Right. So. Let's see, uh, and that's like a bad mount or bad on two or something. Yeah, it could be a bunch of different things. Scatter Bencher, 30 Taiwan dollars. Elmore says that Joe almost beat Slinky PC. Congrats. That one was a while ago. That was a while. I saw that one a while ago. Johnny Olsen, Norwegian 20. Uh, skipped my super chat challenge, Steve. I, I've been reading them all. Uh, Johnny Olsen. Olsen. Oh, uh, no, I read it, but uh, yeah, that's the one I read earlier and said, no, I'm not going to grow a beard for a year, <laughs> sorry. Um, Kamal Weisdorfer, Weisdorfer, 99 cents, thank you, Fluffy, $5, GN pants when? No current plans. GN LN2 pants, that's what we need. LN2 pants? <laughs> we get a GN liquid nitrogen overclocking track suit. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> and we can wear it to Vegas and we'll fit right in. can't even make that up. <laughs> Wear it to Vegas. Yeah, <laughs> fit right in, in the casinos. That's funny. CC five dollars. Joe knows how to build suspense. Oh, we got that one. Uh, PUBG funny. Ten dollars. Love the channel. Good luck. Hope you break a record or two. Thank you, Flores Boom. Ten dollars. Can the uh, oh, we got that one. Can the mod mat function as a good mouse pad? Like we said, not advertised as a mouse pad. Can be used as one, but it is not a smooth surface by design. It's it's a grippy surface. So. Keep that in mind. You might want a mouse pad on top of it. Uh, I, ich, Mino, uh, five dollars. You guys already ripped J single card score. Oh, oops. <laughs> Guess we'll upload that. Hey, we should save this. I didn't save any. We'll oh, okay. save one. I, I think I saved some. You should really be uploading it from your your account though. Although I don't know if that's possible if I'm if I'm the three D Mark uh, license holder on that. Uh, uh, I think if I save it, I can still upload it you can on like my own. Yeah. Pull it down to your own. Yeah, I can pull it up my own and do a manual. Okay, uh, so that seemed to work to get it back. David Anderson, three ninety nine. Is MSI B four fifty Gaming Pro Carbon okay for mild OC? Uh, Build Zoid in chat if he's there. Actually, hardcore overclocking would be a good person to ask that question. I, I am not. I don't have like all the specs memorized for the B four fifty board. Sorry. Um, we do, I'll, I'll say this, we do have a video from Buildzoid on our channel from around December, I think. That was like best 
AMD motherboards or best AMD motherboards for overclocking, something like that. So you can check that video and see what he lists in there, and then those are the good ones. Do a couple more here. Fan 24DR, $2. Thank you. Hashtag Roman Dunsky. <laughs> Sorry, Roman. Basque Master, $5. On the bearded hardware hat, you should put the beard portion of the logo on the brim. On the brim? The hat on the. Like, so that's the front part. Right? Yeah. That's kind of weird, no? <laughs> then nobody would see it. What's the point? <laughs> uh, Matthew Lang. Where is that point? <laughs> $5. I really. Am I getting trolled? <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> I really want a mod map, but I'm waiting on Paul's full review. Yes, well, tell him that we are also waiting on a serious review. Timothy Reed, two dollars. Judge harshly, beard man. Thank you for the live OC today. He's talking about your judging for the OC competition. Yeah, it's my favorite. One. I love doing it, to be honest. Hell X Hound X13, 299. What do you think the specs will be for Horizon 3? We are not speculating on them. I can tell you one thing for certain. I no, I confirmed this months and months ago. Uh, like at CES, there will be a 12 core, there will be a 16 core. We don't know when they're coming out. We don't know if they're coming out at launch or later, and then there will be an eight core. I'm not going to speculate further than that because those are those are things that I, I know to be true, at least uh, as of CES. Scotty, $5. How do you know if there's any BIOS mod for the Gigabyte AORUS 1080 Ti? Mine is on an EK water cooling block, and I've got plus 80 megahertz, plus 550 memory. I don't know off the top of my head, but Joe, what's like a good form to check for uh, Custom BIOS, overclock.net or something? Or? Yeah, overclock.net used to be pretty good. So maybe check overclock.net. Yeah, see if there's one on there. I don't know if Gigabyte allows it too much. I mean, it's kind of, I mean, you got to be careful trying to put another BIOS on your guard first. Yes. Because you, I mean, I've done it many times, but you got to know what you're doing. A lot well, of the times you'll drop memory clocks and then you got to mod memory or something to build it up. As possible if you... And it, yeah, it's possible that you should fry it too. Yeah. So you never know what it's going to do. you got to take it at your own risk. So Let's talk about why you just uh, transferred from one of the smaller cans to, an to another one. Uh, the smaller can, because it, it basically builds so much frost on the other one and it starts getting cold. So basically it's kind of like how the when we use that thing, it, it just gets really cold at the top and you'll get little burns and stuff if you keep doing it. Right. It also does uh, start turning into water, too. Yeah, that's the other thing. Instead of wiping it off, I just switch out to another one. It's a lot of ice. It's frozen. Uh, let me do two more of these before we get back into it. We're only... All right, you're going to have to take a score down. OK, let's do that first. So we're taking a score down. What's your clock currently? I think it's at plus 400. Plus 400 I, still? Let me, yeah, let me double check. No, it wasn't at 400 on that run. That was actually, okay. three, uh, th I think, 375. Got it. Yeah, 94, 95. So that is a, a bit of a 50-point improvement. 91, 88. And then... We finally got a GT2 back. Nice. A little bit. So you're at 375 still and 600. Okay, 375. We'll go with 400 now. Okay. Let me look at the rest of the scores. 94, 95. Um. 91, 88. GT1. 58.08, that's a big improvement, 54.15. Yeah. So again, point of reference, we are now 10 FPS higher almost exactly from our baseline run with no overclock supplied, just cold. And uh, 10 FPS in Time Spy Extreme is a, is a lot of FPS. Oh, yes. That's a, that's a big score jump. Um, let me just do the math on that really quickly. So in score number, uh, 91.88 versus the baseline of 75.75, Sorry, 75, 77. 21 percent total increase, and the memory increase is 22 percent. Pretty damn big increase. Nothing wrong with that, huh? That's pretty damn good. Good job, Joe. I'm glad I was here to supervise it, so you don't get hurt. Prolong it. <laughs> <laughs> we could have run that earlier. Yeah. I hope Ten's still mad about the fan direction. Oh, man. Uh, uh. So, Bill Zoid said to Tin, tell Vince to make a reaction video of watching the stream. Yes, please. <laughs> Kingpin reaction video. Should I upload it to our channel? Tell, tell him to do it and then send it to us and we'll upload it. And then it'll get a lot of views. Pro Overclocker. 
Kingpin react to uh, chicken clock and I chicken guess. clock yeah it's kind of funny like anytime I hear chicken clocking and when is when tin actually says it because the way he says it it makes it that much better yeah so you also need accent. him in there yeah, yeah he has the, that like the tin accent yeah it's so much fun <laughs> like it's so funny <laughs> so every time I hear that I always think of that him him saying it it's pretty funny so you got a ten saying you know, 10 was giving us crap, waiting for 2,400 megahertz. Now it's 2,500. Now probably. he wants 2,500. Yeah, this is typical 10. He's so I, I usually bench with 10 at, on, on the G skill stage, uh -huh. so during EVGA day. And this is pretty much what he does to me the whole time. Were you time. doing that last year? I remember seeing you on the stage last year. I do it every year. year. Okay. So well, for the past like four or five years. Yeah, that's what I was doing. So I don't think Vince was benching. He was doing the Robo. Was, was that Robo last year? Robo clocker, yeah. Yep, yep. So he was doing the Robo clocker, and then I was doing all the manual clocking. Yeah, Robo Clocker, uh, I guess if you haven't seen our video on that, just take a, take a note to watch it later or something because we did a video with Vince last year. Yeah, you'll see me in the background like yeah. doing a bunch of stuff. You'll yeah. see the beard. And uh, that's when Vince was, I don't remember what he was at, 7 point something gigahertz maybe? No, no, no. No? No, because it was Six? a... It was a uh, was it an... It was remember. a 7988. Oh, was it? Yeah, because he was doing XC. a single card. And I think it was a okay. Titan V, I Let's think. Let's see. Here is Nexus, uh, Kin I'm pretty sure it was a Titan V on the dark. E, I think you're right on Titan V. I didn't remember what the CPU was. Oh, you're right, 5.7. Okay. Yeah. For some reason I thought it was a uh, lower core count CPU. No, it was a 5.7, which on an 18 core was pretty damn good. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty up there. So, uh, and that was with the Titan Vs, I think. Does the X79 have a cold bug? Shouldn't. Some chips do. Ten. Have mercy. I have to do work tomorrow. Parentheses today. Can't record eight hours of Vince's reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, Joe's going to have a plane to get on at some point today, so. Yeah. Won't be that long. We still got some time, though. Sandy E has a cold bug at uh, minus 80 to minus 20, depending on the CPU, Buildzoid says. Uh... Okay. What other? We got a couple store orders. Thank you for sending those in. So we got one from Jonathan in Virginia, not too far from here. Picked up the mouse pad and uh, the blueprint shirt. Thank you for picking that up. We got one uh, big order from uh, Reiner from the Netherlands. Thank you for picking up the mouse pad, the anniversary logo shirt the chalkboard shirt, and then the blueprint shirt. Much appreciated. That's a big support for the stream. Thank you very much. Live stream Vince's reaction. So, uh, Ready for a score? Yes. What is the score? I'm waiting for it, too. Are <laughs> <laughs> you at plus 400 now? Yeah, I think it's 400. And then 1,600? 95.51. That is an improvement from 94.95 earlier. Let me just make sure. 92.50, 58.3, 54.67. Mm. Everything is up. It's a pretty good improvement. Yeah. Is there like a cheap Allen 2 pot you know of? Is there like a, like kind of a no-name knockoff one or something? Mm. I looked around on AliExpress. A and GPU I couldn't, pot? Couldn't find any. Or CPU. I'm just thinking like, the pro uh, if you want to get into LN2 dirt cheap, I guess. Maybe uh, check eBay for used ones? Yeah, that's probably the best. To be bet. honest, you're best just like trying to find like old ones, like maybe like a Venom, uh, the Kingpin Venom. That was uh -huh. a good pot. It's probably cheap if you can find it like secondhand. Um, it, I wouldn't really try to do a cheap pot. I know Coolant's made one. It was epic fail. Mm -hmm. um, it was really bad. The EK one is kind of not relevant anymore. I mean, it doesn't fit anything. Yeah, yeah. You, you won't have any mounts. The mounts, because it, it's very, like, you need to buy modules for it and stuff, yeah. so it's kind of pointless. Um, yeah, basically, just look for maybe some old Kingpin ones, or maybe uh, Devour had an older one before the... Before the Beast. No, I think before there's a Beast, and there was another one. I can't remember the... If Roman's in chat, he can, he can let us know what yeah. his older ones are. So maybe probably. just look for used ones is probably the, the better bet, or if you're on a budget. Right. So, but I mean, the Kingpin <laughs> ones aren't really that. Someone says, "What about the GN Copper mug?" You know, that's a good point. Uh, hardware numbers. We'll give him a, a big shout out. 
Hardware Numbers has a, I think, the current leading Cinebench score for AMD 2700X. It's got a nice chip, man. Yeah. Uh, compared to ours. And um, also, oh, Tin says we had the iron, iron LN2 pot. Uh, also, Hardware Numbers has a video. Uh, iron. Oh, wait, let me see what happened. He has a video where he took our copper mule mug and. Um, so we filled these with LN2, Joe and I, last time. He took our copper mule mug, which is actual copper. It's not like the stainless steel that's just painted. So it's actual copper. It's got nickel-plated lining. Uh, not currently on the store, sorry. We're, we, we don't have an immediate restock date at this time. But um, took this, mounted it to the, I think it was like a Ryzen APU or something, and filled it with LN2. And uh, it did really well. I was, I was surprised. Yeah, I probably wouldn't try it on a big chip, though. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a reason you there's use an, an APU, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, that's, the thing you lose with those is uh, mounting pressure, contact. Oh, is, yeah. It's not built for yeah, that. Yeah, there's no... Uh, Surface area. Buffer, I guess you can say. All right. But for a low TDP, it was okay as a, as a joke video. Uh, you should have watched this video, though. Hardware numbers for that one. Yeah, I'd you know, do it again. Try heating it up. Heating up? Yeah, let me turn this off. So Joe is going to torch the pot. We're at minus 105 right now, and I think, are you bringing it down to minus 50? So bring it down to minus 50, and this will uh, help improve some of the stability in a bit. Yeah, really, I should just break it down. If it, get, it happens again, I'm probably gonna break down. So yeah, so Joe's mic, mic's off, but he said if, if it happens again, then we'll break down the pot and Fix it up and then keep going after that. Take about 10 minutes, maybe. 10 minutes to do, so that's not bad. Uh, but right now we're just torching it, and then we will um, we uh, we'll keep going after that. All right, next one. So we got some super chats to do while Joe's torching the LN2 pot over there. Uh, Martin Darlington, five dollars. Thank you, Scatter Bencher. Is Joe using Open Bench Table as his benching platform? I can answer that on your behalf. I use foam usually. Use foam. So Joe uses foam. We actually showed it. Open bench <laughs> table. Yeah. Uh, Thor Wright, 199. Will the order I placed last night be signed? Uh, if it was during the stream, yes. But we weren't saying we were signing stuff after the stream because the problem is, I don't, I don't want to like ship out a mouse pad someone bought after the stream and then they get it and it's signed and they're like, what is Why this? Why are you giving me this? Why did you guys <laughs> sign this? Uh, I don't know who these people are. I just wanted to know. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'll, I'll talk to the when our distributor team is back in town on Friday. I'll, I'll talk to them and see how many orders there were between the streams. And if it's not too many, and we have the inventory, and it, it seems like they were intended, like people wanted them to be signed, then we can do it. But I also don't want to ship a bunch of signed mouse pads to people who didn't like. So typically, I cut it off after the stream. Because if someone waits through the stream because they're like, I want to buy one because it looks cool, but I don't want it to be signed, then I don't want to send them a signed one. So, uh, But you know what, Thor, right, if you send an email to support at gamersnexus.net, that will help us. If you want it to be a signed one, just say like, hey, I bought it between the two streams. I just wanted to specify that I would like one of the signed ones if they are still available. And then we'll send one to you. Uh, if we still have them. We, sh we should, I think. As of right now, we should be good, but um, just send that email. All right. So, next one. Admire Fiesta Guild, $10. Can we have a live Ryzen 3000 overclocking event for the same hour the NDA runs out? Um, we have done things like that for previous releases, so I'll probably try for that. We'll have a review up the same hour that the NDA runs out. We're not, I'm not under an NDA for it right now. And then we'll do a stream probably later in that day. That's typically what we do is we, we give the review like a six hour buffer so that people can watch it and then we'll do stream. DJ Ghost Proxy, where do you go? Ghost Proxy, $5. Building my first VR PC. Any recommendations for good LGA 1151 air cooler that will be sitting on an i5 or an i7? Uh, the Noctua NHU14S is pretty good. Gator Lowell, ten dollars. When I installed Windows 10, fresh install, had Windows 7. My CPU and GPU use 100%. When any single game is running now, and Windows 7 uses 35% max. Any advice? 
Uh, CPU and GPU, 100%. It sounds like a background task or something is eating cycles. That's not normal. <laughs> Make sure your drivers are all installed properly. Uh, Gabriel Seaman, $2. The T-Rex should fit on the uh, 2990WX2. Do that. We will consider Threader for overclocking at some point. How's this going? Good. It's back again. But I, I don't know how GT2 will go. You turn your mic back on? Is it on? Yeah, good. On. Okay. So let's, uh, just for people who are tuning in more recently, let's explain why you torched the pot, I guess. And Well, it just stops running. So it seems when I go back down to minus 50, I don't know if it's the paste or if it's the, the memory that gets too cold after a period of time. I mean, we're, we've been running a while. Usually I go to these clocks right away, so that way it's running, it keeps it hot and doesn't go, but it's kind of boring on a live stream. Right. So we're trying to make it more interesting. Yeah, I'm going to have to just drop it. Okay. Yeah. Got a question in chat. Will you accept debit cards in the future? We already do on the story. You just just uh, type it in. It should work fine. Yeah, I'm going to have to torch it all the way. So. What uh, voltage are you at for? 1.3. 1.3? One three. One three? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I know this runs. That's why. Yeah. I'm just going to be loud. You muted already? Yeah. All right, so I will fill some of these for Joe while he's doing that. Actually, let me take one of the super chats before I go do that. Uh, so that odd fan on the rat is annoying me. Yeah, sorry, I just threw whatever on there. Um, so we got one. Yeah, I <laughs> uh, got one from Frankie Tricky, one dollar. Thank you, Gabriel Seaman, ten dollars. Twenty nine ninety WX on two live stream with the leftover. Uh, While well, Joe's gonna be taking his T-Rex pot back with him, uh, Nightfire thirty-seven five dollars. Tech Jesus is best Jesus. Shmo four ninety-nine. Love the channel. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. I just subbed Bearded Hardware as well. Awesome. Thank you. BPS Customs. I know you. Five dollars. I'm frustrated that Steve has better hair than me, and Joe crushes my beard game. Might drive down there to cause a ruckus. Yes, we want to. I've been talking with Brian from BPS Customs because uh, he has far more patience and ability than I do for building nice looking systems. So after Computex sometime in the terminate period, we're, we're gonna try and work together and have Brian do a, uh, like a, a pretty nice system build in our Case Labs case that we have. Like maybe, maybe um, open loop setup and then we'll have dual X79 and at least one video card in there. So that'll be pretty fun, but no, no current date on that yet. Although, if you don't know BPS Customs, he's on YouTube as well. And uh, I saw him during the China trip that Andrew and I did recently. So I'm just filling liquid nitrogen for Joe right now. And that noise you hear at the end of the pour is because it's starting to hit the floor. It evaporates immediately. So uh, most of you on the stream have seen this at this point, but in case anyone's just tuning in, LN2 in this in these containers are used to fill this one. Joe dumps it into the LN2 pot. It's a bit noisy right now because he's torching the pot. Give us a minute, the noise will go down. And um, if you missed it earlier in yesterday's stream, Andrew, let's do a shot of this again. Uh, so I'm gonna target right here. So just because it looks pretty cool, this is what happens with LN2 when it touches basically any surface. It's uh, just instantly evaporates, it's pretty cool. So, just nitrogen. You do have to be a little careful with this stuff. Um, if you're in a closed space, for example, then it's it'll start replacing the oxygen in the room. So if you ever work with this, be very um, aware of your ventilation. We're in a really big room with AC and- Use the torch. If it doesn't light, there's no oxygen. Yeah, so that's, that's a, good way to that's a great check. indicator. So those are the safety measures uh, and then it, if you're curious, it doesn't really doesn't really burn. It, it'll like stain a little tiny bit, but just don't let it soak. We talked about all that already, but just in case anyone is getting ideas and wants to do this stuff. How's that going? Good. I just got to blow it off and. Mic is on. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. You're good. You're good at this, man. Getting getting the hand of the microphone management. I'm learning. No thanks to you. 
Do you want to walk them through what you're doing while I fill this? Yeah, what I'm going to do is basically heat it up. Um, basically, the card's wet, so they stop functioning sometimes. So we need to basically heat it up and uh, get it back to normal so it's dry. So I'm going to go and uh, use a hair dryer so it's really loud. So I'm going to go in the other room and turn off my mic, and uh, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Oi. You're going to use the, uh, yeah, the, the one we discovered? The amazing one. So, not the, uh, not the heat gun, right? The actual hand dryer. So, um, sometimes people ask about how things have changed since we've gotten an office. <laughs> and uh, one of the best way. This is the best way. So, Joe discovered while here that the, you know, like in, a, in an office bathroom where you have, or any industrial bathroom, you have like the wall mounted hand dryer. Uh, he has discovered that that is the absolutely most amazing way to dry out components because he goes out there, dries it out in the hand dryer, and then it's like it's completely dry and good to go again for overclocking in under a minute, and it's pretty amazing. So uh, Joe will be right back. He is drying that off. Oh, yeah, good point. Someone says time to plug in a power meter. Um, I'll wait for him to come back and make sure in chat you remind me before he turns it on to plug in. Actually, I'll unplug the power supply so that we have something to remind us to plug in a power meter. Very good point. So we'll just monitor the GPU. I'll probably just do it on a kilowatt to keep it easy. So uh, if it's, Tin says if it's possible, it would be cool to show folks how the KPE card is prepped. Let's do that when Joe's back. We'll, um, because it's not mounted now, we can just kind of show it off on the table and show you what it, what it looks like for the prep. Where's the Vaseline? There's a lot of it on there. Uh, all right, Super Chats. So we have. Paul the Bearded One, $5. Got on the stream late today, guys. Wondered if you would advise the Kingpin card, even if I'm not considering using Allen 2. So, you know, being fully honest here, it is not a card you should buy for just like normal use because it is really expensive. I know that EVJ probably doesn't disagree with me on this. You know, it's, it's not built for just like uh, plug it in and let it go. You can do that, and it is technically higher frequency, I think we were running at like 2040 megahertz, which is typically what an overclocked 2080 Ti of another model will run just out of the box. So like it is faster. It's just, frankly, it's, it's not worth the performance increase if you're just going to use it like that. So if you're using it like we are today, then it's, it's worth it because, man, it goes, uh, it's pre-prepped for you. You don't have to do any hard mods. That's the real value of something like a KP card is it's all done for you. So all you have to do is get like the XOC BIOS and start playing around with it. Or even if you don't use the XOC, even if you're not doing LN2 and you're going to do overclocking with the stock liquid cooler, I found that to be pretty fun as well. Um, just be aware that until you put the XOC BIOS on there, you'll become power limited. So uh, you do have to be willing to do a little bit amount of have to be willing to do a little bit amount of work of uh, like flash the BIOS and um, you know do some real overclocking on it. If you just want like the best, which some people do, then I guess you can buy it. The values not there for that use case, but the value is there for what we're doing today, or even one step down. You do like water cooling, uh, overclocking, and I will give you full details on all that in our more official review after I finish the rest of the testing. But um, I will say stock, uh, the performance numbers in games, like Sniper or Far Cry 5 or whatever, uh, were typically higher or equal to a fully overclocked 2080 Ti of like a reference or a, like an XE Ultra even design. So like it is, better. Um, it's just, you know, you have to weigh the value depending on what your use case is. Shh, who's next? Mike Louder, $2. Your GT2 was 52.27 when it was 55.27. Okay, we will check that whenever we get to it. Scatterbench, oh, oh, we actually saw that earlier. Scatterbencher, Taiwan, $30. Not reading Super Chat? Hashtag Tech Judas. <laughs> Add a SEK50. How about merch with Chicken Clocker on it? Well, we'll get Tin involved and license it from Steve Pryor, $1. Thank you. Moose, 6667, 199. Free Super Chat? Take my money. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm just going to run through these while Joe is finishing off drying that, that card out. Um, a quick note, we do run like a 30 to one hour, 30 minute to one hour delay on the Super Chats, but I'm only 30 minutes behind right now. So I'm reading lines from 2.30, which is actually not bad. Uh, Steve Pryor, $1. Thank you. Peter Trinder, $2. Free Super Chat. Thank you. That is really cool that YouTube does that. 
I, I, again, wasn't aware until recently. Christian, $2. Watching this from work. Hashtag Kingpin OP. Joe uh, Riccioni, $1. Lollipop Dancer, $1.99. I'd buy for a GN Chicken Clocker t-shirt. <laughs> Hacterix, $1.00. 1X, $1. Uh, Davio, Steinerson, SEK, $10. Thank you. No messages on those. Hugh Janis, $2. Thank you. Andrew Ruff, uh, Roofcar, $5. Notice 3D Mark is out of date. Is there an advantage to keeping it up to date? Um, you might get some of the, the like updated system info, maybe some new benchmarks like Port Royal, I don't think is on here right now. And then for validation purposes, sometimes it, it is important as well. How's chat going while we're waiting on Joe? What's chat saying? Uh, just talking about your own overclocks, it looks like. So let's see. I, I have, um, oh, nice. Paul the Bearded One says, thanks very much, Steve. Told me everything I wanted to know. Think I might bite for it. So it looks like uh, Paul the Bearded One might be buying a Kingpin card. So um, Joe, when you're back over here, I have two things we got to do. One is... Uh, we should show the KP card in its current state before plugging it back in to walk through how you've prepped it. Sure. Tin wanted to I show have, that. I have to prep it a little bit more anyway. Okay, cool. And then the other one is I unplugged the power supply and I'm going to go grab a. You un unmute your mic. I'm gonna yeah, go it's on meter now. You I'm can gonna, hear me? Yeah. I'm going to go grab a, just a kilowatt meter. Yeah, yeah, that's so fine. The this power. is the time to do it if you want to do it. So enter entertain a chat for me, I guess, and show off what you're doing. All right, let me move some stuff around so you can see it. All right, so I just blew it all off. Is that something it you do really bad? Yeah, I was say, that's just saying. <laughs> you want to work on that phrasing? No, the, the card was soaked. I mean, usually I just bench right away at minus 100 and then go right to about, I think, 2550, 2560. But that's not fun to show on the stream. Oh, here it is. Uh, so, you can see how it's prepped now. It's just basically a lot of Vaseline. Um, all the Vaseline's kind of leaked off from the heat from the blow dryer. So, I'm going to add it back. I'm going to plug in the just a kilowatt meter here. Yeah, just uh, on the thing, and then we'll keep track of it when we're running. Nothing. I'm going to vast this thing up pretty well. All the vast pretty much came off. So, we need to lube it up real good. Man, I'm just coming up with all sorts of good ones right now. I bet you the chat's blowing up. <laughs> you know, there's nothing weird about going to Walgreens to buy... Buy a big tube of buy, Vaseline. Buy three cans of Red Bull and a tube of va tub of Vaseline. Oh, wow. That just really does sound awkward, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, it just looks like we were buying the Red Bull to cover up for the Vaseline. Yeah. Oh, this is a completely normal purchase. There's nothing weird here. You mean you don't do that all the time? Not too frequently. Only when you're here. Oh, <laughs> it's kind of true though. <laughs> oh, I got like bass everywhere. So let's put it on there. So this thing is coated. Yeah, it's definitely coated multiple times. So, uh, John Norris in the normal chat. Can we get a it's Dunsky for old time's sake? There you go. It's Dunsky. Dunsky, Steve. She's Dunsky. All right, Dunsky. so that's the back part. I also want to get under where the memory modules are. I don't know if you can see in here. Underneath here, I have a bunch of paper towels, but obviously it will leak out after a while. So I need to lube that up real good. Yeah, so we got memory down there. Yeah, I think those are probably the memory modules that go. Um, I don't know. You could probably ask Tim because he's probably been all scientific on it. <laughs> but Is there anything that you avoid? Getting it on pins, I guess, PCIe pins. Well, the, when you put the paste on, I don't want it on the... I mean, PCIe doesn't... To be honest, most people say that's a problem, but I haven't really seen that much of a problem with Vaseline. So you're, you definitely don't want it in, obviously, uh, to get in where the GPU is. But well, we're already mounted, so... Yeah, I mean, it's going to eventually go in there anyway. I mean, behind the VGA, but I don't think it really causes any issue. I mean, if Vince uses Vaseline all the time, so... There's not really that much of an issue between that. Someone so. says, what has GPU teardown item number 11 on your media mod mat? Let me see which one is number 11. Hang on one second. I'll answer your question. Oh, that vast. Yeah. Take a look at that chart, too. Is it exactly the same? I don't know if we changed anything. I was just going to show. Oh, it didn't Good point, though. 
So this is a new medium mat out Let me of the box. Out here. I gotta put everything back. Brand new. Uh, what has item number 11? What GPU? Oh, 11 is just an electrolyte capacitor. Um, so basically everything. Uh, let me show. We've got a lot of stuff on the table. So here is. Can you see that okay, Andrew? Here's the mod mat. Uh, yeah, so item 11, Andrew did that that design, that graphic for the um, the video card, the PCB. You can buy this on store.gamersnexus.net. They are in stock. Uh, item 11 is just some caps, like the big, fat, cylindrical cap capacitors. Um, and those are on uh, everything. So I think we kind of loosely modeled after like the larger custom PCBs. And a lot of the time, you'll see those over there. I guess I can, I'll fold this up later. <laughs> I don't need to roll it up right now. All right. So we're almost there. I just got to plug in the power. You did the uh, kilowatt meter on it, Steve? What's that? Did you do something, finally? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're all good over there. Yeah, I just got to plug in all the power. It's kind of a pain make, in this Make sure you spot. pull it from the right power supply, though. Yeah, I know. I noticed that yesterday. I was real nervous about it. Let's see. Which one? Ten, ten says, you're missing the strategic screw on memory chip to improve memory clock by plus 50 megahertz. The memory screw? Yeah. Like the one that Tin installs on his thermal pads. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and if, if anyone's missing that joke, check out our um, cane pin card 2080 Ti teardown. It was done in EBJ's XOC lab. And I opened it up and I was like, there's a screw in here. And then Vince started giving Tin a hard time for reassembling it that way. Well, Tin's always slacking. So. Yeah. Well, I just like that they, they both say that they fix the other person's stuff all oh, the time. Oh, <laughs> when you hang out with them, it's quite a quite interesting. Yeah, they're, they're fun. Yeah, they they act like an old married couple. <laughs> Just saying. So someone <laughs> says this, not inaccurate. Someone <laughs> says, um, "What is the max temp of the Vaseline?" I guess is the question. Max temp. I don't know that there's really. I don't really know. I mean, I guess I, it, it can freeze, but. Right. It's the real whole point of having the Vaseline is to basically have a barrier layer from having water go on to everything. Right. But the problem is, is it also it kind of leaks off too if it's hot. So by heating up the pot, you kind of drain off it, drain it off on certain components. So you're gonna have to reapply. Right. Right. And then when I heat it up and dry it off, I also kind of blow off the Vaseline. So you gotta reapply. So do you need to use the heat gun on that to heat it up at all, or? To like reflow the vase, or are you just gonna let it run? No, I'm just gonna let it run. Okay. Because uh, the pot, I, I heated it up to about minus or plus 35. Mm -hmm. So the heat from that yeah. will just flow it back. So nice. And plus, kind of want to be in a hurry. Get back on it. Power readings enabled. Yes. Thank you, chat. I did plug in a power meter. Thank you for pointing that out. We we plugged one in. We'll be able to read the power uh, during this next one. Sweet. All right. So thank you for reminding me, though. Just sneak in here. So you are preparing to boot, I guess? Yeah. Nice. All ready to go again. I hear that VRM fan. <laughs> yeah, it's the VRM fan going against the paper towel. Just taking a few no white blue. Okay. Making sure we keep track of the Good. mat inventory. So let me. And we're back. And you're back. Nice. Power meter, power meter, power meter. I got it, guys. We're good. We're good. Hey, Steve, do you have the power meter? <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> and just showing it now. Steve, where's the power meter? Yeah. <laughs> Steve! <laughs> Uh, Kayu Katsu Ninja, love reading that name. 327, here is my survey money, thank you. Kenneth Stebbins, 365, love you guys, have a great stream. Thank you very much. We are doing pretty well we so far. We love you too. Lord Iron, $5, I have an old 560 Ti, I believe it is, that I have no more use for. Could I send it to you to do whatever you want with it? Uh, we have actually two 560 Ti's from a reader already that we're working with. Uh, 
don't uh, no promises that will put it to use. If you're like trying to get rid of it anyway, and you don't want to bring it to electronics recycling, then we have a PO box listed in our. Um, what was that video? Uh, Which video are you talking about, Steve? Yeah, <laughs> we we did a video recently on a reader's components they sent in. I don't know what it was. We have a PO box on the channel. You can search for it, um, but no guarantee will work with it. Let's see. Steven oh. Kylebert, five dollars. Love your content. Keep it up. Thank you. How's that going? Good. Just uh, pulling down again. So I basically took a blow dryer and totally got any water that was on it, even inside the pot, because that would also affect how we clog this time. Our so. deltas are pretty nice right now. We got. Oh, oh yeah. Anywhere between three or four degrees. We also, it's like a timing. Yeah, thing it's definitely the delayed on yeah. the software. So we're eating like four degrees software and about zero on the reader, the meter. Yeah. And we're going to lose the software soon once it gets too cold. Yeah. It's kind of normal. But yeah, a good indication, like if you lose like any type of pace. Right. The, the temperature. Uh, you can't do that. Two dollars. Differences between a 2080 Ti and an RTX Titan on LN2. Uh, well, I mean, if everything else is equal, then the Titan RTX should outperform it if they're 100% equal. Yeah, but sometimes the memory is a limitation. So if you have a lot more memory, it's more stressful on the GPU. That's true. So that's not always necessarily true. Yeah. Because usually the, the TI is always a cut down version, right? So yeah. Well, I can tell you from for chilled water with like a non XOC card, the Titan RTX does outperform it. Because we yeah. did that. But once you get into LN2, especially if you're working with like a KP card, then yeah, there's no competition. It, the it, Titan won't yeah. even keep up because there's so much you have to do to that Titan. I mean, if you maybe took a Titan and put it on the KP PCB, right? Yeah. If you like power modded it and yeah. stuff, then maybe a. Yeah, but even the power mod, it's the piece, the PCB design on the KP is what makes it special, right? It's not just it's all the components used. It's also right. them trying to they're giving you an LN2 overclocking card right off the bat, so you don't have to do all the major things to try to combat. And you used to do that stuff. Yeah, I used to do it before Pascal. Well, I did I did a Pascal card too, but you'd e-power it, right? Yeah, it's, it's just a pain. Is that the same as a what? What is a when people talk about a zombie? Uh, it's put in the, basically it's cutting power to like uh, the GPU mm -hmm. and putting your own power okay. card on there. So that way you can control everything that goes to the GPU. The problem with it now is it, it's very complicated because NVIDIA locks it down so much. So before Pascal, they didn't lock it down as much. Right. So now they do, so they make it much more difficult. So I kind of got out of that zone of doing that. Right, yeah. Well, you're fighting a losing battle. Yeah, so it, it came down to it. I, and I, you know what? I had a lot of fun doing that, too. That was kind of my, what I used to do all the time. Yeah. So. Uh, CC, $5. I wonder if torching helps lower the delta between the inside surface of the pot and the bottom so the LN2 evaps quicker, cooling quicker. That's kind of what it is. I think the answer yeah, is. The answer is yes. Go up. You don't want to do it too much because then you do, if you do too much water, then you're kind of creating an adverse effect right. because the water then turns into ice and then it becomes a barrier between the LN2 and the actual pot itself. A little bit is good, so that way it basically, I don't know, it like soups up the pot to be able to suck the LN2 right. in, so. Matt Hill, $1. Hectrix, $1. Thank you. Actually, uh, sure i got to turn it off again. i got to torch it real quick. Okay, got it. Brewbaker, $10. Will you be reviewing the Gigabyte AORS monitor that you're using on the stream? Been looking at buying it, but waiting on a good amount of reviews on it before pulling the trigger on it. Uh, we don't presently review monitors, so no, unfortunately, I won't be reviewing it. I uh, sort of know how to do the, the monitor reviews if we ever had the manpower, but we just don't right now. Jimmy Cakes, $1. And then again, thank you. Ike44, hair, beard, and LN2, what else to do? <laughs> Anthony Jackson, $2. Uh, best for H80i V2 and Corsair, 760T, rear or bottom? I would do rear with that minimal amount of information. Uh, Ikmino, $5. You guys just beat Kingpins and Der Bauer's single card score. Really? Well, well, we're not done yet. I don't know how much Vince uh, does TSE either. No, I don't think he benches at all. He, he does uh, a lot of Port Royal these days, so. But we'll take it, though. Uh, Royal. Let's see. Royal so we'll do 1600. 1600? Yeah, we're going to go pretty much right up. Where did we leave off? 450 yesterday? 
yesterday or today? Uh, today we left off at 400 and yesterday 450. Yeah, we'll do 450 right 450. Away. Yeah. Going for a bigger overclock now. Well, it, the trick is the card is not dry, so it's actually better to do it now. To do it now right off the bat. We'll get this running much much quicker. Your voltage is uh, 1.3 for NVBDD yeah. and yeah. 1.5 for FBBDD. Yep. Yeah. So you have GPU volts and then memory volts. Hex 1.13. Problem is moving. Yeah, it's 1.113. Yes, 1.13. Yeah, it's there. And then, so we're at minus 50. Uh, I have written down 1.13, but maybe it was 113. Was it 113? Yeah, it's 113. Okay. Yeah, well, I, feel like I wonder if the load line was messed up from last time. Load line should be level zero. No, it was actually should be 10. No, zero is the flat load line. No, it's the opposite. I, I don't thought. think so. I'm pretty sure it was opposite. I'm pretty sure it's totally. level zero. Well, I was running level 10 yesterday. So. Oh, okay. Someone told me that. I didn't actually verify it, for sure. Tin's going to verify it in chat, I'm sure, as soon as the delay catches up. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I'm pretty sure it should be zero. If you're at... 10 yesterday, then you can probably drop your voltage a bit. Let's see what... Well, it usually depends on the GPU. <laughs> I've seen some where I've had the opposite, where I wanted it to flow up mm. like that, and it would actually give me... Because I could only set a certain amount of voltage, so I ended up changing the load line so it would go up, so the initial set would go, and then right. it would pass up. But that was the back in the 980 days. Rainier Overtomb, looking forward to the Mousepad 3 shirts and the antistatic wrist strap. Well, thank you for purchasing them. Gary T, just right. bought a GN Mousepad, a Cobalt Blue Beer Glass, and a Medium Crystal Statue. Awesome, thank you for the support. Awesome. Is Tin answering us? Tin says vote for 2500 chicken clock, minus 100C, 1.4 volts. You don't even need it. <laughs> uh, if you don't notice, I keep fighting him. Yeah. This is what I do at a copy ticks all the time. Level 10 will give you a massive droop. So I think level zero is what we want. Yeah, but I was running it last time yeah. this way, so I want to just make sure. Okay. If I know something's running, then I'm going to keep it the same. It was just weird because it set the level zero by itself last time. Right. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, the defaults doesn't seem to affect the load line when you click default. It just leaves it wherever it was, which is Tin's fault. It's always Tin's fault. <laughs> All right, so just 100. All right, so uh, let me, how's the store doing? Lots of orders on the store, thank you. I'll shout a few out, can't get them all due to the volume, but Igor from Springfield picked up a mod mat, thank you, and an extra uh, wrist strap. Well, definitely enjoy the mod mat. My favorite thing to do is still that. Get all the little ice crystals <laughs> everywhere. That's I'm telling you, you had to do a video in the pool. We should have did that at the hotel. Yeah. That would have been amazing. Banned from ever returning. Probably. <laughs> All right, I'm going to fill up these nope, containers no. for Joe because I just <laughs> emptied it on the mop mat. How did... Oh, okay, I got one of them. I'll get on one. Okay, There you go. Yeah. Fresh out of the freshy. brewer. Yeah. You mean a freshy? Freshy. Yeah, it's fine for now. Oh. Come on. <laughs> Any day now, 3D What are you doing over there? Oh, I'm just going for a, a bigger run. You going for 2,500? Do you pass 2,500 megahertz? Uh, I just went right to 450. 450 offset? Yeah. Memory 1,600? Yeah, it's not liking it. Let's change the load line. I could have sworn it was at 10 yesterday, but... I think it was at zero. I saw it at 10 for a little I, bit. I just wonder it was it, if it did that by mistake when I did it yesterday. Because I, ne I never changed it. I might have changed it, I don't know, if you weren't looking. <laughs> Could have been. That's, all right, I got to fill this. Maybe that's what it is. You change it on me. I, Thanks a lot, bud. If I saw level 10, I'd probably change it to zero. Yeah, that's probably what it is, though. Because to be honest, I was benching a while for it. A while with it. 
So this will be the first time we're doing this today. Uh, just going to fill the doer up. We have 180. I'll take some super chats in a moment, too. Uh, Stygian the Derper, no shout out for buying a mat. Feels bad, Matt. Man, there's your shout out. Thank you for buying one. Like I said, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of volume. So doing my best to keep up. Um, super chats, I'll do all of them, at least as of now, by the end of the stream. But no, I got to catch wrong. up. Having trouble with stability? Yeah, it's not running. I'm just going to reboot. Well, you got time. I'll fill this and yeah. show it off to, to the stream. So for those of you who weren't tuned in yesterday, there's a transfer hose. These cost upwards of $400, depending on the length of the transfer hose. And uh, this is an LN2 cylinder, 180 liters. It is mostly empty, if not fully empty. Well, it's still leaking, so. And then we have another one behind me um, that is completely full. And I guess I'll have to try and find something to do with this in the next week before we leave for Computex, because otherwise there's no point in having it. So uh, that one's still full. The trick here is to, so doer's mostly empty. Got to hold on to the transfer hose. It's going to start with like an alien noise, as chat said yesterday. Sorry. Uh, and you hold the hose at first to, in case there's like a pressure kickback, so it doesn't, there's a safety Smack you in the face. Yeah, so it doesn't smack you in the face. And. Which I've almost had heaven. <sighs> and then this, Joe, I think the tank will start making a, a squealy noise when it's empty, right? Yeah, it will be a, like a really nasty. Wine. Yeah. So we're not empty yet. And that's the LN2 filling up. So that's the gas that comes off of it. It's a liquid going into it. And I can show you some temperatures too. Uh, so this is just a thermocouple reader we use here. The room temperature is currently 22 degrees. For what it's worth, humidity is 46%. And then the just like the sort of the off gassing right here. Actually, let's get really close to it. Let's get like let's get right there. It's right at the top of the. <laughs> so the thermocouple. You have a good shot of that, Andrew. Thermocouple is currently minus 179 degrees Celsius which is just about where LN2 is, minus 196. Uh, yeah, it's probably, it doesn't read that well. I think it, well, it, A lot of them thermocouplers don't. This should have a range of uh, minus 200, I think. Some of them say they do, but they yeah. really don't. It's kind of. Well, it is, I don't know, it is nearly touching the metal of the transfer hose and in the container, so it'll be close to uh, those temperatures. Let's get it on the transfer hose. It'll bug out at some point. What's going on? Yeah, we're at minus seven, 170 up here. And then just like right here is uh, pretty cold. I mean, you, would, you wouldn't feel too good holding it there forever. So that's minus, it's currently zero. Oh, now it's bugging out because the end of it frosted over. <laughs> so now it's, now it's going, be, it was going between yeah, uh, like zero and a uh, hundred and minus a hundred, because the end froze over. So we lost accuracy there. It's definitely cold. It's cold. And there's the well, let's see what's going on here. tendrils we get. I had to tighten this yesterday because I realized last night that uh, it, it was, was leaking. Not, yeah, it was leaking. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you don't want to touch this when it's on. It, it it'll it'll burn. It's cold, and it will burn you. Yeah. It's like looking at a frozen like telephone pole or something. Not a good idea. Still got some left. Let's kick it up a little bit. So just filling the doer with liquid nitrogen. Joe, what's it looking like for you? No, it's running now at 400. 400 it didn't like It didn't like the load line at 10. Okay. Or at, at zero, I think. What do you have it at? 10. Oh, okay. What's uh, V-Core? Uh, 1.3. Or not V-Core, but you know what I mean. Uh, I don't know. I think it, maybe the paste is done. Because remember yesterday, I, I basically repasted it. And we were running basically almost 2,600 right off the bat. Yeah, So. Right. I'm not having that same look on this. It's such a hot chip, and like, I mean, if you look at the die, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. 
It is a large die and it's high temperature. And it beats up the paste. You gotta figure out how hot it's going with these type of clocks. Cause we're, I think we're at about 2,500. Yeah. Uh, what are the, someone asked about the big tank. Where's the yeah. big tank question? Is that the one big tank? Yes, that's the first one still. I'm gonna torch it one more time. Yeah, we need like a. I think we're getting approaching empty on this one. I hear, you hear that rattling? Yeah, I'm telling you that tank's broken. Uh, my, my, my mic's off. Your mic's off. Yeah. Joe says, I'm telling you that tank's broken. Sorry, we're doing a lot of things with a lot of noise right now. I'm gonna step over here. <laughs> so Joe is torching the pot. Uh, and then I'm filling an Allen to a doer, 30 liter doer with liquid nitrogen. And the noise will go down momentarily, but that does take a little bit to fill. They check chat. So, uh, let's see. If they make it cooler, the air will freeze, someone says. Um, yes, there are special gloves made for LN2. We do have them. Actually, there's one right there on the table, but we don't use them because it makes it hard to handle the, the containers. And it's just frankly not really necessary. Uh, Questions. All right, turn back on. Okay, cool. And um, I'm back. Yeah, I think we're... Someone says, greetings from Germany. What thermal paste do you use? We are using the KPX yep. paste today. Yes, sir. Blue thermal paste. He sells it on Kingdom Cooling. Yeah, it's fairly new, too. You just picked this up, what, a couple, couple of weeks ago when yeah. you were in Taiwan? Yeah, yeah, our KP paste is pretty new. They, they didn't bother you over, like, when you... We're checking in with paste because I've heard them do that. I remember you sent me some, and like customs kind of freaked out. Uh, no, but one time I did have um, I did have someone from Ace Attack bring us like probably two pounds of thermal paste. Oh yeah. And he he carried it on, and uh, it was from China. And at the China the airport in China, they their TSA. I can see that. They took, they took some of it, they took a lighter, and they tried to light it to see if it would explode, which seems like a kind of dangerous way to yeah, see Yeah, like, right, let's test it, like, right in front of us to see if it explodes. Yeah. That's like a, that doesn't sound like a really good idea. They're you breaking stuff over there? They're trying to make sure it wasn't a plastic explosive. Yeah, nope, but. Just thermal paste. In front of you. Yeah. Well, so they would have blown up. You know? Yes. That's not a, the funny part. Not a good idea. All right. Now, if this doesn't work, then I'm going to just break it down and repaste it. Okay. Uh, Fenchak, 87, is the signed mod mat really $20 purchased, FYI? Well, thank you for purchasing it. Yes, it is, because uh, I have to drive a combined one hour to and from where they distribute from, and then we have to go through and sign them all. Uh, but it, it is a big support, obviously. Uh, Paul Ripper, $2. What is the oldest Intel or AMD CPU that you have overclocked, Joe? The oldest one? Yeah. Or maybe the first one you maybe did. Maybe like the P4s. Actually, no, I, that, that's a lie. Back in, uh, you know, the what, the X286s, where you can do like the jumper overclock? Oh, you did stuff? the 286s? Oh, yeah, those were like the first computer. Yeah, the paste is done. Nice. I'm going to have to break it down again. Okay. You do new yeah, I'm just going to redo paste. Redo paste. It's kind of at that point where it's not coming back, and I know what this card runs at, so. Right. It's all Steve's fault because he made me. All right, so we're full of Alan 2 over here. <coughs> Could be the Vaseline on the sides, too. Vaseline on the sides, yeah. Uh, Axios gave me an order number and said, signed, please. Um, we don't have a way to just, like, sign by request or personalize. So if it's a, a mod mat and you paid for the signed one, it will be signed. If it's a mouse pad, uh, bought during the stream, it will be signed. So you don't have to worry about that. If it's like a shirt or something, though, we don't do that. Uh, have you thought about doing phase change cooling? I have thought about it. I have done chilled cooling. I'd like to do more of that. But, um, oh, nice. We're almost at the bottom here of the Super Chats. But no, I haven't done phase change. Uh, let me catch up on the Super Chats. We're almost at the very bottom of these. It burns when internet protocol. 
Uh, friends on IP. Question, any for, question for you or Joe, any plans to give a tutorial on stripping Windows 10 for better scores? That, that'd be better uh, for you to do than me, so. It's a good idea. I could, I'd probably do a video on that. Yeah, so Joe might do that on Bearded Hardware on YouTube. If you check him out, subscribe to him. He's links below. Sam TQC123, $2, $2. Free money for you. Let's go. Thank you. Marius Haglund, Norwegian, 22. You guys look like a sleep cover band. <laughs> Great work. Well, I'll, I'll take it. I've also gotten uh, uh, Eddie Vedder. I've gotten that one, too. Matt R, $1. Matt R, one dollar again. Thank you. Daniel Bachman, two dollars. Is lawn hair and a beard, is lawn hair and a beard required for extreme overclocking? No. Joe says no. <laughs> it's very that's very uh, inclusive of you, Joe. To to not have a. I'm trying to play nice, okay? Not pull the ladder up after you. <laughs> Joshua Bell, five dollars. My reference 980 Ti Max is out at 56 degrees Celsius. Sorry about the noise, guys. He'll, he'll stop soon. Yeah, I'll be done in about 10 seconds. Okay. 1458 megahertz core. Any way to get a little further on air? Um, 980 Ti isn't as temperature sensitive as Pascal and Touring, so that's not going to help as much. It will help, but not as much. Uh, maybe a custom BIOS, if you can find one that has a higher power target or something like that. Johnny D, 499, GM store donation on its way. Thank you. Happy to support the efforts of Captain Overclock. Keep up the awesome content. Thank you very much. Uh, Lom, PLN. You're welcome. <laughs> PLN 10. <laughs> uh, can you put Titan RTX GPUs on this PCB? Like, um, like desolder and resolder? Nah, I, I mean, <laughs> if you got some crazy VGA skills, probably, but I don't think the. PCB would handle it, like you'd have to have some custom BIOS and yeah. NVIDIA locks down the BIOS so much that, I mean... Wouldn't be trivial. Guys like Tin and, and Kink and Kingpin could probably definitely do it. But. Right. Uh, Steven Lynn, $2, can you make a video on loop order with two radiators? So... You might want to get this to... Because okay. I'm going to take it all apart. Cool. So let's get a close-up. I know there. what the card runs and it's not running it, so that, type, that means paste is done. What's your... Your goal today for frequency? Uh, 2,600. Yeah. Nice. I mean, we were at, yesterday we ran almost 2,600, no problem. Yeah, we're Bef close. I did it before, and then I shut down the system so that way we were prepped for it. Right. But obviously we sat there for a long time, chicken clocking. Yeah. And that's really never good. You should really kind of go to the clocks, last clocks you were, to really get a, a score. Because right. the car gets cold when you're not running, and that's just typically how they go. Yeah. So, so the... Uh, Again, for point of reference, 2600 megahertz, that doesn't necessarily mean a lot to you. Uh, the overclocked 2080 Ti's like the XE Ultra or the reference design, they typically fall in the range of 2050, maybe 2115 megahertz max. So 2600 is, is massive yeah, for uplift. So how do you feel about the, uh, the paste? The paste was good, but uh, for some I you could tell it's very hard, because look how big that die is. It's monstrous. I mean. It, it, if you look at like the older cars, they were like so tiny. Right. So I, I'm, it's probably just needs to be reapplied. So I know I did it yesterday, and as soon as I reapplied it, I was like, bam, back to 2600 again, or almost 2600. We got a message from Jacob uh, at EVGA saying, "How's it going?" Good. Can't complain. Well, Jacob, I'm not gonna reply to your text. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully you're watching the stream and there's your answer. You should be watching the stream. That's too. right. Uh, let me read these last few Super Chats. It's always nice to get caught up on those. We, we don't have too many here. Uh, here, I need to steal these for me. Do it. There's some spray. Can you make a video on loop order? Oh, I was going to answer that. So loop order. Um, yeah, if, if you're doing like GPU overclocking, I would say hit the GPU first because it's going to be a lot more thermally sensitive than a CPU. CPU, if it's not like 90 plus, then it really doesn't doesn't behave too differently under a normal overclocking, uh, like non-extreme scenario. So I'd say hit the GPU first to take advantage of the thermal dependence on, dependency by the clock and get a boost there. Um, so. Xdevs.com. Oh, this was earlier. Thirty Taiwan dollars. Vote for 2,500 chicken clock. Minus 100T, 1.4 volts. Yeah, I would actually do it 1.3 yesterday. So 1.4. I probably should go 1.4 after we're done when I get the... Uh, Get it repasted? Yeah, repasted. 
Do we have enough KPX? Yeah, yeah, the big tub is funny. Okay, cool. I'll have to buy more from them. Yeah. Uh, See, all these pace guys, man. I, I'm doing the wrong business. I need to get in the pace business. Yeah, for real. Because, like... Well, that's, that's what you do when you're a retired overclocker, right? Oh, that's true. And you can't bench anymore. Yeah. You're getting too old. Your knees don't really hold up. And yeah. yeah. Poor just... Devour. <laughs> He's old now. Poor, poor Devour. <laughs> <laughs> you just start making paste instead. I know. I'm going to have to. <laughs> Thermal Grizzly and KPX, both available. The funny part online. would be just the name. I think we were talking about that a little bit For yesterday. For yours? Leprechaun? The Leprechaun or some yeah. Viking. Yeah. Viking. I don't know. Make it red and call it like... Viking blood? Yeah, Viking blood. There you there go. You go. <laughs> I don't know. Imagine sending that in like the, uh, the, the customs the, and stuff. <laughs> yeah, those customs for us like, will be good. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> be like, uh, nothing? It's computer paste? It's liquidy, it's red, and it's called Viking blood. It's Viking blood. What do you guys want from me? Right. Um, Tobias Friedel, 549, thank you. I sent EVJ an email because the Kingpin 10 ATI I bought from another guy is coil whining very loud. What are you guys uh, thinking? EVJ will replay or de do? Replay. Um, I think they will. Um, I've heard them before of uh, some, there was, I think, a small issue with coil whine. But I don't know. You've got to ask EVJ. We're not really yeah. reps of EVJ. Not a rep of EVJ. Eric M, $1. Eric M, $1. Thank you. Uh, Chris Goodman, $4.99. Wanting to build a game server, what would be the best setup for this? The game is Arc, and will be a dedicated server. Any thoughts? I haven't made game servers in a really long time, but I did used to make them. Um, I, it's going. I, I hate giving answers like this, but it depends. It depends on the game. I don't know how the Arc server. Uh, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna go use the blow dryer. Okay. Yeah. So I'll be back. All right. I don't know Actually, how the. Yeah, I'll come back for that one. How the Arc um, server behaves. But maybe run it on a computer you already have and get some friends in there and then load up like Task Manager or Hardware Info or something and monitor the load level on each of the components. And then you can sort of start deciding how much does it care about frequency versus core count versus GPU. Uh, I would imagine it's pretty much all CPU on these things. So um, it depends entirely on the game. My best advice is get your current computer. Tell it to run the server, have your friends join it, and then monitor the usage from there, and then figure, figure out the rest. Uh, so Joe is going to clean off the KP card one more time and try repasting it again. And then hopefully we can hit the 2600 megahertz that he wants to hit. Uh, Kevin, Hardesty, 199, thank you. Classic Mini DIY, $1, thank you. And again, $5, thank you. Are you guys still in NC? I run a channel down in Charlotte and love your content. Yes, we are in NC. Uh, Matt R, $5, would there be any benefits to using a pad instead of paste since the paste seems to freeze and crack? It would be worse, unfortunately. Um, new age, uh, new, I'll stop it there. New age, $5. Be honest, Joe, you only went to get away from the love bugs. Uh, Adam Schumann Sr., $5. I need a chicken clock shirt, $5 bribe for cat treats to make it happen. Well, thank you for the, the support and continued interest in that. I'm going to check on normal chat. How's that going? What is the spray? Good question. Uh, what camera is used for the stream by XDevs as well? So the spray is, we're not like sponsored by them or anything, but uh, CRC, it's just a contact cleaner. I bought that from Lowe's. You can get it at any local hardware store. So that just blasts the hell out of the paste and cleans it off pretty quickly and efficiently. And then XDevs asked what camera is used for the stream. And we are using a UX180 for the stream. And uh, Andrew mans that the whole time. So it keeps it a bit more active. It's a lot of work on. Blow this out. I'll be right back. OK, cool. And then we're good. Sounds good. So yeah, UX180. And then we're using wireless labs for the rest. Uh, let's see. If the VRM heat sinks are hot to the touch, should I be worried? Not necessarily. I mean, hot to the touch versus like too hot for the VRM are different things. A human, 60 degrees Celsius is hot to the touch. But a lot of MOSFETs can take 125, 150 degrees Celsius. You don't want to be that hot, but they can take it. So if it's hot to the touch, that might be between 50 and 70 degrees Celsius, depending on your, your personal kind of like thermal sensitivity. And um, that's not really bad. but. You know, you start getting into the 90s, it doesn't feel great. It can take it, but you know, it's always better to be a bit cooler. I'm just taking the normal chats right now. 
Uh, any thoughts on tinkering with some stuff like FPGAs? No, I, I have no experience with that. All right. What is the best thrown paste to use on GPUs while doing this? We are currently using Kingpin's KPX paste. Yep. Roman Derbera also makes some extreme cooling paste, like Cryonaut. And uh, I'm sure there's other stuff out there, but those are the only two we ever use. Is yeah, those are the main ones. Cryonaut and KPX. We used to use like Gelid or Gelid, yeah. however you want to say it. Gelid Extreme. Yeah. <coughs> Car should be hot enough that it's pretty much flowed already. What was the spray being used? I answered that one. It is a CRC. Yeah, that stuff's amazing. We used to call it um, magic spray because, like, if you have paste in the socket, you can just spray it out. You don't have to try to use a toothpick or anything like that, which I kind of laugh at when I see a bunch of people try it. <laughs> They're like, yeah, if you want to try it, that's all up to you. Where's the paste? Actually, make sure get any Vaseline off there. Oh, man, these handles are frozen. You having trouble over there, Steve? You need me to help you out. <laughs> You need a helping hand. Always having trouble with the, yeah. the doers. It's all right. I'm here for you. <laughs> oh. Man, it's kind of impressive to die on this thing. They're massive. Yes. <laughs> like, seriously. There's a lot to cool. Yeah, I think that's the issue. We might have to replace paste after a couple benches. Because yesterday when we did this, as soon as we fired it up, remember I was running... Uh, about 2560 right off the bat. And then yeah. we broke it down. That way we had something good for the stream. Right. But obviously we chicken clocked. Well, I'll take, take your time on getting it back up and we'll make this one of the last attempts, hopefully, yeah. if, if it works. Nah, it should be fine this time. This is a good opportunity, though, to uh, talk in more detail about the setup for this stuff if you did want to try it at home. So obviously there's some safety things, safety of the hardware, making sure you don't kill it, safety of yourself with liquid nitrogen handling. Um, but, and we've talked about that in the past, uh, although obviously read up on it, make sure you understand any risks. I don't want to make it sound like it's too bad, but I also don't, you know, don't want people to be careless. Safety of the hardware, though, a lot of it is going to be insulation, making sure you have like Vaseline. Yeah, uh, yeah. you need Vaseline. Or you can use a couple different things. People use sometimes conformal coating, um, liquid electrical tape. Uh, I used to use electrical, uh, liquid electrical tape all the time, but Trying to get that stuff off is kind of like, I don't know, impossible. <laughs> I mean, it's not very easy to do. It works pretty well. It, it could cause some heating issues too sometimes, but it's just an absolute pain. Like if you never want to use the card for anything else again, that's kind of what you do. Um, but if you ever want to resell stuff or right. want to use it in your daily after you're kind of done benching it, I, I'd recommend Vaseline. The, the trick with it is just really, uh, cleaning it, which can be a pain because Vaseline is a little bit annoying. Right, right. Someone says $2,000 for a camera is cheap. I would agree with you. The UX180 was like four grand when I bought it though. And then we also have an A7R3 uh, with the- You really also need a lot of room though. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of the pain. Yeah, for overclocking. Yeah. You mean, yeah. Uh, A7R3 with a $2,200 lens has been what we use for the factory tours. Right. Uh, yeah, let's see. Oh, people asking about what power were we at? We never never really got to reading it. Oh, uh, not yet. We got it stable. We, yeah, it just was instantly not stable, so we had to go back and basically Someone go. says, could you just use Plasti Dip instead? Uh, it's the same thing as almost elec uh, liquid electrical tape. It's still a pain to get. It. Number one, it's a pain to apply depending on what you're applying to on a GPU. Um, it's just a pain to take off. Uh, a lot of the times you might rip off a component when you're trying to get it off. Uh -huh. um, it depends on how thick you apply it, but it's also kind of a, a pain to apply because it pretty much, when you're spraying it or you're applying it, it kind of goes everywhere. Right. So, I mean, you can use it. it it's very similar to a lit, but it, uh, can, again, if you don't mind wasting your graphic card and never want to <laughs> do anything with it, I mean, Ten says, "Post the score, beat the Vinbo." Is Vinbo Vince? Yes. I guess. Yeah. And it says, "Post the score." Been using that name for like ever. 
We got to make sure you, you take that score home and upload it. Hopefully, oh, we're going to beat that score again. Hopefully it well, I, yeah. I have saved one from yesterday. Okay. Hopefully it applies your name to it if you upload it from home, because I, I don't want credit for that. I'll no, take credit for the CPU overclock. No, I have... Uh, <laughs> I have, We'll have a higher score after this one. I knew this is going to help. Let's see. Just got to make sure it's nice. Probably about right. Yeah, because what was it? What's the high score on there? Let's see. Did someone post it or? 3D Mark Hall of Fame. Because yesterday, I think we have a documentation of. Time Spike Stream, single card. And, well, keep in mind, too, that we could plug in the 3175X processor if we really wanted to go ham. Because yeah, it, it does help in TSE, though. Oh, yeah. Um, well, yeah, you're talking to make major cores, and then you're yeah. also talking about, uh, what the heck is it? I can't, the, Memory, you know, the too. Offset? Yeah, but the offset, what is that, the uh, AVX? AVX, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the current leading score is 10,521 points. How do we beat that? And our current high is 9551. Um, yeah, we're on like fifth place then. Yes. But they're also all, all on liquid nitrogen on the CPU. Except yes. for the RTX. Well, no, that has to be. Well, is that a bugged one on the second one? Who's the CSNT? CSN 7. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll check in a second. Um, number one is a Xeon. Oh, it's a 30. That's why. Yeah, 3175X yeah. on the first run. Which we sense. have, but. Yeah. Yeah. Splave. Compare the, the GPU thing. score, though. Let's That's see. Let's see graphic score, yeah. Graphic score, single card. I mean, we're. We can still definitely push it more. What we have now. Kingpin is 19th here, so I, I'm thinking he doesn't really bench. No, he doesn't bench time. Uh, so. Time spot. I extreme. talked to him about it. He what is he? Do you know what he likes these days? I know he likes Port Royal. Port Royal. Yeah. I think that's the big one for him. Okay. Back to normal. Nice. Let's go. This is basically what we do every. Every time you GPU bench. <laughs> That's why it's such a pain, because if you have an issue with your CPU, and at, then all of a sudden you got to break down everything. So yeah. say you have an issue with your CPU and you, your GPU is good, you could got to break everything down, heat it up again, and basically make sure it's good. Start so over. Yeah. yeah, it's a little tedious sometimes, but if you love doing it, it's quite enjoyable. When do we need to, your flight 759 is when it leaves? Yeah. So we need to leave here at like... Six. Yeah, that's uh, fine. That'll be plenty. Yeah, of time. but if you are resigning stuff. But we do have to sign ma mouse pads, so okay. it's almost four. It'll take us maybe. If yesterday's an indication, maybe thirty minutes to sign the amount of orders we have right now. So we probably want to try and stop in about an hour. That's fine. I want to get a good run in first. Yeah. Can't go out like that. <laughs> so we're gonna get another run going. Yeah, it shouldn't take long now. Tin says you can run Port Royal. Vince ran with a 7980XE. Yeah, the problem is we don't have it on this OS. Right? I don't think so. Yeah, I think your key was weird. Uh, it might be, it might need to be installed or something. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Let's see, super chats. So we got a couple. Uh, to Joe, $5. My 6600K does 4.8 on air. But V core stays at 1.45 even when down clocking at idle to 800 megahertz. V core is set to auto in BIOS. Motherboard is an ASUS 170 gaming. Why? Because uh, it's set to auto and yeah. BIOS you could, is. I would actually set it to like a manual voltage and test which one you want. So you could probably go much lower than yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. We had a guy that actually was saying that yesterday. And he said thank you because he did the same exact thing. Yeah. And we dropped it down and he, I think he went from like 1.4 to like 1.2. Yes. Yeah, so we've seen that on some boards in the past where a, get over here. a board will run at like 1.4 and then you manually do it and you're stable at like like 1.19. Yeah, auto is like kind of like suggested, which probably shouldn't be, but and it's it's like a lazy thing for the manufacturers too. If they just blast the voltage auto, it'll it'll be stable. Yeah, cuz you be gotta fig there's a variance, right? Right. Of depending on what GPU or CPU like the lottery you get, right? Yeah. 
Christoph Kemmelmeyer, five dollars. Thanks for these streams. They inspired me to get some old hardware to bench on Harborbot. Really there fun. There you go. Love hearing that. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, saving for a an LN2 pot now. If I can stop buying boards, <laughs> that'll be cool, man. Always. It becomes quite an addiction. That's for sure. Yeah, I love seeing that kind of message. Nate Slackerman. Nate sounds Slackerman. Like, sounds like someone you'd be friends is, with. Is he stealing my thunder? <laughs> <laughs> One dollar, thank you. CC, five dollars. Linus plans to test a loop order because he doesn't believe it matters. Apparently you asked him about it. I didn't ask him about it on the water cooling video. I told him. <laughs> uh, loop. So, okay. A few things. Does loop order matter, in quotes? Matter is like a big question mark of what does that mean? If your definition of matter is that the... Other than like things uh, like scientific matter, redaction de definition of does it matter is is the clock higher on the GPU? The answer objectively is yes. If it's Pascal or Turing or anything else that's frequency thermal uh, relationship, so yes. Like it's uh, look at our uh, any of our reviews of the cards. We have that OC stepping chart. I note the temperature in there. And often in the first two rows, I run it full stock, and it's got a lower temperature because it hasn't run yet. And then the second run is the same like settings, or maybe the third or fourth, same settings as the previous, but with a higher temperature because it's been running, so it got hotter, and the frequency goes down. Why does it go down? Because they are thermal dependent. So it does matter. Um, so yes, if you hit a GPU first in the loop, and you've got like 500 watts going through that card because it's overclocked, uh, pretty high or something, that or for you know be be more reasonable maybe 400 watts. Uh, that's going to be a big difference versus if it hits the CPU. Maybe you have a 500 watt X299 CPU like we're running here, and then it hits the GPU. That water's warm now. So if you're five degrees, ten degrees higher on the GPU, that does impact the clocks. Now, does it matter? Like, does it impact the frame rate? Well, not too much. Maybe max one, two, three FPS, something like that. So it depends on how you define that phrasing. But for competitive overclocking, like we were sort of doing there. Separate loops. Separate loops. Yeah. Because it matters. It does matter. Yeah. A couple of di different degrees. And it, I mean, on a different cards, too. I mean, yeah. And it could make a big difference. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, was it 980Ti? I don't understand, though. Like, Linus uh, is fairly well informed on this. I don't know how he doesn't. Because like, that's what, during the laptop fade, he was like, I don't believe you that the GPU is, is responds to thermals. Like, it's, it's done so that, that means when you add liquid nitrogen, it doesn't respond? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, that's number one demonstration. But Boost yeah. 3.0 is where that was introduced. Um, anyway, yeah, that's my, my rant on thermals. It does. Uh, Someone says loop order does not matter, rad placement matters. Okay, we're not talking about like where it goes in a case. I'm talking like on an open air bench. So that's not even the consideration here. Um, yeah, pump speed uh, is important, obviously. But the, the point is not really loop order. The point is thermal depend. I think chat's getting like a, uh, thinking this is too much about loop order. It's about how much the frequency responds to thermals. That's my point, because that's, that's the discussion I had with Linus, where he didn't believe me that uh, the frequency does actually change quite a bit with the, the temperature. It's not about loop order there. It's about the, uh, how temperature impacts frequency. I feel like we needed like, some type of disclaimer. <laughs> For? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. What the hell we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. Uh, so yeah, it's not a, not a, a pump. Order th or a loop order thing as much as it is thermal frequency interaction. Uh, questions. All right, we're getting there about minus 50 again. To Joe, two dollars. Also on latest BIOS version with the most settings, definitely. I don't. I f oh, regarding the 6600K. Ivy Nat, five dollars. Support GN and the overclocking guy. Thank you. AJ the tech, one dollar. Moving frag, twenty dollars. Have you considered lapping the GPU die? I saw Der Bauer lapping the CPU die for a better result. Well, you want me to answer that real quick? Yes. I actually usually scuff it up. Yes, I do that. If you notice, like, you'll see numbers on it, on the die. They kind of, I, I usually smooth them out. So you got to be very careful. Obviously, you don't want to ruin a uh, very expensive GPU. Right. But usually, I scuff it up a little bit and lap it a little bit. Not too crazy. Just so that so it's flat completely. Because you, 
even we saw yesterday when we mounted the, the, the GPU onto the Pi, it actually transferred the numbers onto the Pi. Yeah. So like it obviously yeah, like it imprinted it, it. imprinted it onto <laughs> the Pi. So you can tell by doing that and actually lapping it a little bit, it will help, to be honest. Right, right. Uh, All right, so 60. So we're about to do a run. Yeah. Yeah, do you want to go up to 1.4 volts, or you stay at 1.3? No, I'm staying at 1.3. Okay. I know it runs this, so it's not okay. like... I just want to... i got to torch the pot again. Uh, let's see. AJ the Tech. Oh, got that one. Thank you. Um, Any other question? Yes. Oh, XHAL, XHound, X13. 49. J tested loop order, and it does not matter. Once again, we're talking about the GPU temperature, not quite as much about the loop order. <laughs> also, I can definitely make the loop order matter if I, if I wanted to. Like, you mm. run a long enough loop or something, you know, with a weak enough pump, it, it starts mattering. Too. There's too many variables. Too. There's a lot of variables. You can't yeah, just... Yeah, to say that it's no. Yeah, like, at some point, you can make it matter for sure. And it also depends on maybe what block you're using yeah. and, like... There's a lot of what pump you're using. We were using a, uh, yeah, if you're using like a weak pump or something. And then, uh, but again, that's that's not even the point. The point yeah. is just like on NVIDIA, the GPU frequency will be higher if the yeah. temperature is lower. Yeah, you basically period. your OC room will be lower if you, right. depending on what you do. And this is nothing to do with loop order right now. Yeah. I'm talking like you could have a loop that's only the GPU, and if the loop is higher, is hotter, uh, for whatever reason, maybe you're running at a higher ambient temperature, then the, t the frequency will be lower. That's just how it behaves. That was really the question, not the loop order. Uh, let's see, next one. Dark Wolf, $10. Best OC guide for an 8700K on the Aorus Elite motherboard. I don't know off the top of my head, but Overclock.net has some pretty good guides on their forums. Uh, you need an OC guide? Yeah, any other? There's not too much to do on the Gigabyte stuff. You can just set, make sure you set LLC and voltage. There's your so, there's your OC guide. Yeah, usually I I, I want to say they ha the top one that they have is extreme, and then they have a turbo. Usually on the 8700, you want to set the turbo on air and water, and then uh, for the load line, I forget what I, it might have a different name in there. I, each manufacturer has a different one, and I float from board different boards all the time. Right. right. Um, but ha set that, and then you just set up your multiplier and cache, and that's pretty much it. And what your chip needs, what voltage it is, you is based upon what it needs. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, so let's get this clock going. Hold on. Oh, Tin says he's taking a nap before work. Uh, it's gotta be late for him, like 4 a.m. Oh uh, yeah, it's 4 a.m. there. He says, Bearded Hardware, thanks for the stream. Good luck with chicken clocking. <laughs> <laughs> it's Steve's fault. It's why it's done today. <laughs> no, it should be better now. Of course he's going to leave it. I guarantee you we like, have a great clock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that he's not going to believe it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll have video evidence. <laughs> so I think we are... Uh, we are approaching the end for hopefully this overclocking, if it goes well on that one. Yeah, I think it's just based. Should be going now. Make sure all the clocks are set. We'll do a little four. Plus 400. Yeah, 1600 on mem. Cool. Yeah. You've got your voltages set? Yeah. Do you want to go higher? No. Okay. Keep it the same because this You're ran yesterday. Level 10 LLC, you okay with that? Yeah, so based upon yesterday when yeah. I broke down and I did paste, I know that this works. Okay. So All right. It should work. The problem is, is something we, we actually went, that's why Tin was basically kind of busting us the whole time. Right. It's because that's really how you shouldn't run. So you really should go right to yeah. the box right away in this architecture because of how hot that GPU is. Right, us. right. You guys made me paranoid about using my AIO. I was already scared about using. You shouldn't really need to be scared of using an AIO. Like they don't. I know they're like the most simplest water cooling you can. Get. Yeah, I love working with CLCs because it's like it's the fa it's faster to mount than yeah. an air cooler. Don't have to worry about filling the loop and yeah. going through different things. I, I was actually fighting that when I was pre-testing for our AMD stuff. Uh -huh. 
I'm like, I could use the AIO or I could set up this whole, because I have a lot of water. Yeah, of course. Here. I'm supposed to do some videos on some stuff. And I'm like, should I set up this or should I? And I'm like, which one's easier? Right. So your, your mic's on? Someone's asking. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, oops. Yeah, oh. let me know, Andrew, if you notice that. Yeah, well, you probably heard it off of yours. Maybe. Probably heard it through yeah. mine. But yeah, um, no, you don't need to be worried about closed loop liquid coolers. Just on a per model basis, sometimes there are issues like the H115i Platinum SE, the white version specifically, had an issue where the coolant was leaking before it got to the customer. In which case, hopefully, you didn't have a leak in your system. It just ran too hot. Yeah. And that should be something you notice immediately. But that was like a, a specific issue with, uh, with that production run. The Enermax one has some issues with the water they're using interacting with the chemicals they're using where it can create some gunk. And that's like a, a specific cooler model issue. The Acetec ones or the Acetec made ones, they're all reasonably safe to use. Failure rate's pretty low on those. Uh, FF Poke, two dollars. Want to see your name on the Port Royal benchmark? Well, maybe we'll start submitting one at some point. Uh, why does the GPU have a minimum temperature? So why why do you stop at like minus whatever you're stopping at minus one thirty, for example, minus one hundred? Um, well, the the thing is, is I don't want to get it too cold too quick because you'll see like how we failed before. When yeah. it gets too cold, all of a sudden bad things start happening. Like the memory will maybe bug out, or right. like there's water that goes in underneath a chip and just starts causing crazy issues. So you kind of want to maintain temperature and only go as cold as you need it. Right. So we really don't know the max. We know what we were doing yesterday. So I don't want to, I know at minus 100 that I can do plus 400 or plus 450 on this GPU. So it's yeah. basically just to make sure that the card doesn't get too cold to be able to. Right. So it doesn't right. ruin our benching basically. Right. Because you already saw it ruined yes. the last benching because we took too long. So. It seems to be a paste, paste thing too. I was nervous about AIOs also. There are some horror stories online exploding and destroying systems. I've never heard of a CLC explode. I, that's a first for me too, like exploding? Explode is a little bit hyperbolic, I think. Well, I guess maybe like if you had a fitting pop. Yeah, maybe. A lot of them use plastic and stuff, maybe yeah, it's a bad one. You could maybe. I've never personally seen it. And I've had a lot of AIOs. Well, I just, I don't know that the word explode is really appropriate. A good, yeah. It's not like a, it shouldn't be a pressure buildup. If that's happening, then there's a big problem. There. Well, I know, isn't there, um, if you use different types of metals and you don't have a per, uh, thing, to, isn't there a, a way that it, there, it can build pressure? Yeah, yeah, well, so yeah, pressure will build, obviously, by heating up the liquid. Um, but isn't there like if you have an aluminum versus copper and uh, then you don't have anything for corrosion treatment? Yeah. Isn't there something that can cause? So pressure's not really as much of an issue as just like getting a bunch of gunk from all the corrosion and then. I thought, I, I thought there was a, a block manufacturer that put out like a notice on it if you were going to oh, use something. Yeah, there are. Maybe it was a specific coolant that right. was used. There I was actually, there was one of those. Yeah, um, I was, um, that's where I'm getting It might have been EK who published that. I don't remember who, who published the coolant notice. Yeah, good. So, yeah we, so we just ran 400, no problem. Why is he not wearing gloves? I mean, we've, we've done this already, but let's just, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> 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 that would be why. Evaporates, like, instantly. Yeah, um, yeah so I know we, we've, we've done this, but let me just, I'll go through it quickly again. Dangers of Alan to you um, would include like the tanks need to have a, a pressure release, so it needs to let some air out, so it doesn't like build up too much pressure and explode. But you know, we we just kind of trust that these are made properly, uh, and they do. We can hear it leaking like the whole time. Yeah. So it's got a pressure release. That's probably the one benefit of it leaking that we know that's. <laughs> you good. know it's safe. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and there is a psi valve on it, like a, a meter, so you can look at it if you're really concerned. But not not too much of an issue if you. If the companies well, we're also using low pressure tanks versus yes. high pressure tanks, so that's also another benefit of using low pressure that it's going to be way less pressure yeah. to be scared of because the more high pressure, obviously, the more dangerous. And then again, soaking is the concern. So you mm -hmm. soak it into your clothes, that'll hurt. You close your, you cup your hands, that'll hurt. Yep. Um, and then uh, other than that, I guess oxygen. Don't do it in a, in a really small room with no airflow. Yeah, and we always have a, we have our little indicator. 
Yep. Does the torch light? Yes or no. If it does not light, there's no oxygen. And ventilate the room or leave it. All right, that was a good score. I think 95-11. Is that better than any one we had before? Uh, See, this is why, like, so on a non-cold card, so like an initial card, this is what makes it, you could tell. We were 95-51 previously. Yeah, For total was, score? Yeah, total score. Yeah, 95-51. That was plus 400 and 1,600. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm lying then. <laughs> All right, so we're going to actually run it again. I'm going to go right to uh, 450, okay. since we're kind of like near the end. And then I'm going to start pushing it a little bit more and more. Then we'll jump to like 1.4 after this one. Because I know 450 ran at this last right. time. So there's no reason to chicken clock it up. No, I say we, we just go for go for it at this point. Yeah, this uh, is the time to go for it. This is kind of what I was waiting for. Normal chat question. Would a copper IHS cool well with liquid nitrogen? Um, well, the problem... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, to run all the piping, so you know how much of a pain it is to just do, like, normal water cooling? Like, how, how much it is to set yeah. up a loop and stuff? Yeah. It'd be a lot harder with liquid nitrogen and a lot more expensive. If you look at the RoboClocker that yeah. Vince did, there's, to be honest, it, it's going to be so expensive to set up. It's possible, but it could also be dangerous, too, because if you have a lot of pressure buildup, so you'd have to have one of these tanks and then have it hooked up to basically you your need a, component. You need, a, you need a return, too. Yeah, in a return. Well, I, uh, or another there's tank. Another, uh, um, there's another guy that actually made another system that was oh, basically really? an automatic one, uh, my buddy Brian. But uh, he had one that would... Uh, didn't need a return system. That didn't work. Yeah, RoboClocker was basically closed loop liquid nitrogen. It's pretty cool, but it was very difficult to, you know, for Vince to kind of make and maintain. I'm just going right to one and four. But it's, it's basically a CLC for LN2, though. Yeah, it's a little difficult. Did you see how hard it was like put together? Oh, uh, it was not trivial. See, was I at minus 150? Oh, OK, that's why. I was at minus 115. We're going to just raise it to 1.4. Where were you for that? Minus uh, I was at minus 100. Okay, so you need to be colder? Yeah, it just needs to be at minus 115. I kind of forgot that I did that. Because we've been chicken clocking all day. Yeah. All right, so, uh, a little bit of cold scale. The 1.4 should help, though. You're going through these faster now, though. That's good. <laughs> yeah, it's because you're pushing more. So, like, the higher you push the clocks, the more LN2 you're going to go through. Right. Uh, let's see. Super Chats. We got... Uh, Vegeta... Kicker, Norwegian, twenty dollars. Do a pro fist. Thank you. Uh, Squirrelies, twenty dollars. Joe, your beard is as boss as Steve's hair. <laughs> Thanks, Broski. Death to. Oh, I'm not gonna read the rest of your name. Death to two dollars. Pour one for all of the dead GPUs. <laughs> we should recap that. <laughs> to all my dead GPUs. To all your dead <laughs> GPU homies. Uh, FF Poke. No, I got that one. Uh, 16 VSC IR Scoboy. $2. Why does GPU. We oh, got that one. Minimum temperature. Kyle Glasgow. $2. Favorite Migos wrapper? I don't know what that means. Uh, is it core offset? I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. Ziggy. $2. Uh, Frank R. $5. Overclocking my 2KP 2080Ti's and 7980XE alongside you. Nice. Jumped back to number 28 in the Time Spy Extreme Hall of Fame. Where's your 3175X? It is uh, not out right now. We wanted to keep it simple. Ziggy. Yeah, we're yeah. getting to know the GPU. Right, yeah, focus on one thing at a time. Yeah, usually what I do is what, like I'll do, I'll run a couple sessions like this to kind of get to know the GPU. Because if you're going to manage like a big system like the 28 core, you, you need to know the GPU before you do anything. So what is your, you're a lot more active right now than earlier on this pouring. Yeah. So what is, what is your temperature target? Uh, just between 120 and 130. Okay. I don't want to go too cold. I'm just kind of hovering in here. It seems to like it. So I'm at four plus 450, which is probably like 2560. Right. And I'm at 1.4 volts. 
So you're trying not to go too cold right now. Hence. Yeah, I want to keep it hot. That That's the key. Like you saw that we were like chicken clock it. Yeah. And then we were really long in between sessions. And that what that does is it actually makes the carb um, much colder. Yeah. And that's when you start getting issues. You kind of want to be a little bit quicker with GPU benching with liquid nitrogen. So usually what I'll do is I'll find out like a normal clock that I'm used to. And next time I bench, I'm going to go right to that as soon as I start. Right. And that way, like, you don't keep on chicken clocking. That's where that kind of the term comes from. Yeah, that makes sense. But of course, that's not the best thing to stream, right? You need some anticipation. <laughs> right. Kind of like my part two of the Apex video. <laughs> Just saying. Ziggy, five dollars. Would it be worth it to delet my CPU and polish my IHS? Well, it depends on the CPU. If it's uh, like an 8700K, then yeah, it's worth it. With delet liquid metal, you get a lot higher with that. Well, 9900K too, but it's a lot more work. It's so much more work, and, yeah. and there's a bit more risk involved. Yeah, it's not as easy as the 8700K or the 7700K or the 6700K. Yeah, anything that's soldered is just, it starts entering territory where it's not worth it for kind of the average use. Yeah, and then also with the 9900K, since it's soldered, I think that the IHS gets a little bit more warped, so you, you might as well lap it too. Right. To be honest, like you could probably just get away with lapping it, and it would be better. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I had a, uh, my, one of my chips, uh, I would, it would do about 5.2 R15, and then I lapped it, and then I could do 5.3 R15. So it was really off too, so when sanding, so you can tell. Yeah. But there's a big benefit, but of course you're gonna lose your warranty, so. <laughs> <laughs> but really, you, gonna, you can always just paint it, paint it silver, and then write on it with a sharpie. Or you could like stamp it with your signature. Yeah, since, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> too soon. Just saying, too soon. All right, so this was a good run. All right, Steve, you want to write these down for you? Yes. I'll save this one too. Oh, that's, that's a little full. Careful. Yeah, 9600. That's a nice score. Uh, 9600 is a nice score. What are you at? Plus four? 9627, and it's uh, plus 450, I think, at 1600 mem. Let me s Okay. I'm going to go 470. 450. What are the... Give me the FPS numbers. Oh, hold on one second. Let me just set it to 475 moving now That's yeah nice. so uh it's 59 21 and then 54 86, 54, 86. got it okay i get some that's an improvement here. improvement for both of them yeah but you see how easy it is to go like up now yeah. versus before so if you keep on chicken clocking up that you're not really getting the real benefits so right it might take a couple sessions when you're first going to learn what the gpu likes and then you just go right to it you don't have to like worry about it you just go right down yeah so yeah. i'm gonna go back up and then start it Minus 125-ish. Yeah, ish. 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 Baja Truck Guy, $10. Missed the stream yesterday. Late for this one. Don't forget it's Mother's Day. Love to throw host of Lion. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, Christopher Schaefer, $2. Can you say hi to my wife, Megan? Hi, hi. Megan. Hi, Megan. <laughs> thank Happy you. Mother's Day. Yeah. If yeah. you're a mother or right. if not. Uh, Kyle Glasgow, $5. Her, come over. GN, I can't. I'm overclocking her. I'm going to use Dynex thermal paste, GN. Cryonaut is an affordable, high quality. And then it cuts off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> J Jason Morris, $2. Thank you. So you're holding, uh, this is, I feel like we're really moving now. Yeah. That's uh, why Tidman kept on busting. Yeah, right. But it was kind of fun to do uh, that. Ah, the man. power meter. People are freaking. Actually, this is a good time to check out. the power meter because we're at. Are we at GT1 right now? Uh, yeah. 602, 610 watts. 610, yeah. 612 watts. 611. I'll keep an eye on it for GT2. Yeah, I'll tell you when GT2. Well, you'll see this spike because yeah. obviously it will drop and then it will go in. Yeah. It would be like a big initial too. So we're like uh, over 600 basically. Well, we're at 550 now, so lower intensity part of the benchmark. Yeah, GT1's about to come to close. All right, done. Now we're gonna go to okay. GT2. So now GT2. we're at 90 watts right now. Doing yeah, nothing. that means it drop clocks. All right, it's about to start. Okay. About to kick off now. It kicked off. 
so GT2, wow, 670 watts. Yeah. 70 watts more than GT1. That's why I was running GT2. Yeah. You could tell GT2 is the, the main part of the benchmark. 640, 600, so we're between 600 and 670, depending on the intensity. No, oh, we failed. I just saw it drop to 100. So. Yeah, that's usually when you know. All right, so what are we at? So we did 475. Let's keep that. Maybe adjust the voltage a little bit more. Everyone's happy that they got the power read off. Team watt meter assemble. We're going to try, like, change the load line. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm at 1.4. Yeah, I was going to say, I want to see 1.4 and, like, uh, level 0 or level 1. Yeah, I kind of want to see. I almost want to just run GT2. Okay. It'll be fast. Yeah, just that way because we're not messing around. No, wait. Don't click it. I can't stand when it does that. <sighs> Good to have you be there, Steve. Yeah. You've caught that a couple times. I'm you? the spotter. Well, it's done that to me a lot. Yeah, it's annoying. The trick is to click out of the window. For it builds, I taught me that one. Click out of the window and then click back in. Who has time for that? <laughs> yeah, this might be good if you want to check the, the full volts. Okay. Or we're wattage. Let's see. Probably going a little bit too cold, but. What are you, minus 130? Yeah, no, failed. Damn, well it was at 653 before it failed. You know, I might heat up a little bit. I wonder if that's an issue. You were at minus like 115 yesterday, I thought. Yeah, but we're also higher now. Yeah, that did not like that at all. That almost seemed like that was actually a load line issue. Why aren't you saving your scores? I, I don't think we really care right now. Nah, this is not real scores. Usually if I bench this, I'll bench CPU full bore. Yeah. After well, you get to know the GPU, then that's when you match them up. What clocks are we running at? Do you know where, where we are for GPU? Yeah, we're at plus uh, 475, which is... Over Probably 20, almost 2,600. Almost 2,600 megahertz on yeah. the GPU. Yeah, see this failed. So 1,600. And then we're doing 475. Let me try this, actually. I'm going to put the load line back down and just lower the temp. Back down to easier or harder? Oh, well, it's line. harder if it's at... Or actually, was that 10? Yeah, it was at 10. And then... Yeah, because we were at uh, 130. <laughs> Sam Dean. Hey, guys, let's donate to people who are doing nothing but pouring Alan 2 in a can. Gee, thanks. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah. Uh, OK. <laughs> I don't know. You're still watching. Pe people, do yeah, really, <laughs> like, uh, OK. You, you thanks got, for watching. You got us. <laughs> I mean, it's like. I don't know. You can apply that to anything. Yeah, for Keep real. donating to people just I'm playing games, entertaining millions of people. Go have fun gaming. Yeah, right. It's amazing, like, especially with all the, the gaming channels you have nowadays. Yeah. No, not even. Didn't run? No. I think it might be shot. I'll try a couple things. I'm you should invite uh, Sam Dean out to your OC competition. Tell him to pay his way there, and he can... See how easy it is to pour Allen 2 into a can. That's all you do, right? Pretty much. You just pour Allen 2 into a can? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> need a reboot. It's not happy. It might need to be uh, heated up a bit. The problem is that CPU test is so long that it basically gets so cold during that time yeah. frame because it drops clocks to right. about 300. Yeah. GPU drop. Oh, it stopped detecting? Yeah. So what are we at there, 2600 megahertz? About 2600. Okay, well that's pretty damn good. Yeah. Should be fine. Uh, 10. 10 says, tell big boy to drop memory clocks. 
Might be worth trying, I guess. Like From 1600? Maybe like yeah, 15, 1560, 1540. We'll go back to 15. Yeah. Just to get a higher core for now. Could be too much stress, yeah. Not a good... Not a bad thought. Someone said, she's done, Ski! <laughs> well said. <laughs> so we okay. got... Reading chats. Someone says, I'll donate to see you, got you shave live. Joe. Is that Thomas? I bet you he's on there. Pino de Vogel, apparently. Uh, I don't know who that is. <laughs> is that Fogel or Fogel? Fogel. Yeah. Is that from, uh, is that super bad? It's a last name. Fogel. And it means bird in German. Really? I think it's from, from memory, I think so. From my, my four to five years of German, I think. Let's see. Now I gotta look it up, because otherwise Roman will give me give me crap. You gotta think of. Oh yeah, I remembered it correctly. It is it is Vogel. Yeah, bird. It's German for bird. Yes. That's interesting. Learn something new every day. <laughs> Set the power on the driver to max performance. Prefer max. I don't know. If yeah, I it did is. That. Did it you? Is, okay, yeah. we already did that. Cool. When can we see <laughs> Fenlaw two dollars? When can we see RGB mod mats? Uh, Day after never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no current I plans. Can. I'm sure we can mod one though to Let have me see if I can mod, get you mod to mod two. Oh, Pino is Big Bird from Sesame Street. I didn't know that. If Pino or Pino? I don't know. What? What does that mean? What does that mean? I have no idea. <laughs> You sounded so surprised, like you had an epiphany moment. Well, because like you had a light bulb go off. Fogel was in the name too. Oh, okay. Pino is the. Oh, okay. That was part of the name. Is the full-bodied character the Dutch co-production of Sesame Street? That was Street. his name. Oh, the Dutch version. Pino is a large blue bird that represents the psychological age of a four-year-old. Okay. Well. I ruined, guess that's. They just ruined Big Bird for me. <laughs> I think we we are also the full-bodied version. No, of not happy. Psychological age of four year olds. I'll do this. All right, I'm gonna turn it up. Heat up. Did you drop the memory clock? Yeah. Okay. Not happy. So we gotta figure out where we're calling at some point. Probably soon. Yeah. I'm gonna drop it to minus 50 and then bring it back again and see what it does. Get a stable run in there. Yeah, I think the CPU clock, just in between that, just waiting for it, it's just killing the cold. I mean, 450 was running like a champ. Right, right. Uh, someone says, when one minute ruins your childhood. <laughs> uh, all right, so we got a couple super chats I'll read through. Um, I'll be done in like two seconds. Okay. Give me like about five seconds. We got CC. <laughs> Uh, five dollars. Thank you, Pat Plants. Five dollars. Bottom mouse pad. Great stream, guys. Thank you very much for Thanks. the mouse pad pickup. Appreciate it. We're gonna ha that's what we're gonna have to make sure we have enough time for those. But I think we'll be good. Uh, Jarble, ten dollars. Late to the party, but wanted to give you a bump for the great content. Thank you very much for the support, Damian Baznet. Three dollars. Howdy. Howdy. Hein Peter. The fun uh, Brown Stewart, five dollars. Thank you. It's so easy, a roboclocker can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Best, one dollar. Uh, Fenlaw, two dollars. When can we see RGB mod mats? Oh, I got that one. Uh, Jacob Parrish, ten dollars. Thank you. Nick Best, five dollars. I s this is for you, you, Joe. I see your RAM is marked as best. What frequency and timing does it reach? Um. Well, those ones. So basically, there's four modules in there, and they're two different kits. One's a a gold kit and one's a silver kit. So I took the two best out of the kit, out of each dual channel kit, and I wouldn't say they're my best memory, but mm -hmm. they're they're really good memory, the the newer RGB ones. So I think they did about, which is IMC limited, the one chip that I have on the 9900K is kind of crappy. So it would do like 40, about 4800 uh, nice. CL14, uh, 1313. Nice. Um, it does really nice. That is very good. Yeah, you'll see them in, the Apex Part 2 video. Okay, cool. Those will be like the headline. I think it's like 
Yeah, it's pretty pretty high on memory. Yeah, it, uh, right there, I'm actually IMC limited. Okay. Honest. Yeah, they probably do actually higher than that. Almost probably 5K. Cody Lankford, five dollars. I want to build an old setup off of eBay so I can do some overclocking. That is a great idea. Good idea. Would you guys recommend an AM3 setup or an LGA 1150? Which do you think would be more fun? 1150, probably. 1150. I guess the alternative is like FX, where you're. Yeah, but you're going only for frequency, so you're no performance. It's right. kind of, I don't know. I guess you can learn cold on it, but it, I don't know. I would. My preference would probably be the. 1150s. Yeah. That's just because you're an Intel shill, Joe. No, it's just those chips were just so much fun. To be honest, that was a good, a good time. Yeah. To play. Baja truck guy, five dollars. I think it's dead, Steve. <laughs> Got an eight six four, five dollars. Just bought a mouse pad. Cheers. Thank you. All right. So let's hope this holds this time. What are your settings? Oh, 475. Okay. It's the same. It's just memories drop, but... 475 on core. Yeah, it looks like it just beats up on pace. Because I just heated it up. Usually that's a pace kit. Vince told me that it, it loves to beat up pace, so... Right. So this is not... Out of the ordinary. We used to have to do this quite a bit, actually. If it gets too cold, and that's what, if you leave it way too cold, the paste and the bond between just doesn't work that much. Right. So by doing the torch, it actually kind of melts the paste and warms it up so that way it's better interaction or what do you mean? Just better like so soaks faster. Yeah. yeah. It bonds. I bet if we, it, to be honest, I bet if we sanded the pot down and put a scuff on it, it would probably be better. I think that may, might be it with the plating. Right. Because, to be honest, all my pots are pretty much lapped. Let me check the wattage before that run ends. Well, it's only GT2, but... Yeah, 568 right now, 570, and this is the lower... Yeah, it's the low, lower, lower part end. of the bench, 600. Yeah, usually any, that one where you saw the peak was a Be certain section. Yeah. I know that section. 641, right there. That was a nice GT2. So it passed? Yeah, but that nice. was just CT2. Okay, cool. We'll do, try a, a, a run now. Yeah, it was a 5503. That was a big, uh, a big GT2. We're going to end up running the whole thing to get that way we can get a score. Okay, cool. Because you can't get a score doing custom runs. Need more of this? No. No, I think we have two. I think that'd probably be plenty for now. Yeah. We'll see. It depends how far it runs. So we're starting to approach, uh, 475 has to be about 26, I think. We can check before we break it down. Yeah. Approaching a well, score. Well, you could tell like, if you add, do some math. I know you don't like math there, Steve. <sighs> uh, uh, Tin is still in chat. Nice. Yeah, did you take your nap, ah. Tim? <laughs> I died again. I'm fighting this one, huh? What do you say now? No, I was oh, just I try, trying to keep up with the chat. It's hard to keep up with chat. He says four hours before time for work. Man, can't you just go in whenever you want? Just go in. I mean, Vince is the kingpin's the only one in there who's gonna know if Tin's not there. Just uh, tell him to cover for you. You're doing work right now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's uh, busting our balls. Media a lot of work. Media <laughs> relations. <laughs> Actually, you should ask Tin if he's going to be, or is he going to be at oh, Computex? Yeah, I watched chat. Day? I asked earlier, but I didn't see the answer. Tin, if you're there, uh, XDevs in chat. Works for EVGA. When are you? Are you going to be at Computex on any any days? Let's see. Open a door and window so you don't pass out. No. Looks like y'all need some oxygen. No, we need some sleep, I think. Yeah, <laughs> we've been going for like the a couple, of, this is to be the third day straight. Yes, it's, and yesterday. We were pushing it. I don't know if you added it up. Yesterday we did about 16 hours yeah. of work by the time we, went, we were done. And I mean, oxygen is <laughs> in the room, so. Let's see. We are fine. Should I buy the new Logitech wireless mouse? I have no idea. I don't pay attention. The new Logitech one? Yeah. 
Someone just said high events. Is Kingpin in here? Or are they just? I see X devs. Oh, there he said birds chirping because it's uh, morning. Twenty-five thirty megahertz. No, I, it's not twenty-five thirty. Okay, so we'll check on that later. Because our boost clock was uh, higher. Right. Let's see if I go a lower temp. And he says he will be at Computex. Oh, that's good. So that means I get to pick on you the whole time. <laughs> so rem we'll remember that. We got to do some videos. Of, on yeah, I'll go get. I'll go go find Tim too for a video. It'll be fun. Oh, it is. Dunsky again. We'll do one more heat up, and then <laughs> after that, you want to kill it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so we'll do one more run. Uh, we should figure out what frequency we're at for the next one, though. Yeah, we can do that. Tin is doing customer support in, in chat, apparently. <laughs> Overclocking support on standby. Yeah, xdevs in chat. Uh, show, him some, show him some love. He's one of the guys who worked on building this card, the Kingpin 2080 Ti. A couple of hours ago, you recorded the wrong GT2 score. It never went down. It was 52.27. Okay, thanks. Oh, did we? Whoops. Not 55.27. 52. I don't have a 52.27 anywhere in this log. But, oh, I see a 55.27. I see. Thank you. So that's, I see. All right, cool. Thank you. I corrected that in our log. We're gonna keep that. I'll just do a full run. Just make sure it didn't drop the driver. What's the clock at? We'll check as soon as we get it running. We know the offset. I'd like to know the actual no, I dropped clock, clock though. It was at 475, so let's do, was it a? Uh, that card is Dunsky, bro. Too temperamental. Yeah. <laughs> Will the $20 autograph wear off? I mean, it's Sharpie, so. Eventually, it depends on what you do with it. Well, I mean, it, it'll stay there. Just don't, don't like use your mouse. Uh, so we're signing the top row. Actually, first of all, the autograph doesn't cost any money for the mouse pads. It's it's the same price you pay for the mouse pad, so it does not cost anything. We're just doing it for watching the stream. Um, it will not rub off. Don't use your mouse on that part of the mouse pad. As for the mod mat, same thing. It's sharpie. Like it's it's gonna stay there. Just don't uh, don't wash that part of the pad with alcohol or something that would, you know, kill Sharpie and you'll be fine. It'll stay there. <laughs> my fingers hurt from crossing my fingers. Ooh, that's a burn from Ghostfish in chat. Hmm. Tin did the real work. Kingpin just put his name on it. Oh! <laughs> Damn! That's... I want to be clear that... Those were not my words. I was just reading them from someone else. Man, it's brutal. <laughs> That's savage right there. Yeah. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> See, we got those super chats. Uh, Makinda, $2. Fun with the toys, mother... OBS, reconnection successful. Okay. Let's see if we're still no, going. It's dead. Is it still going? I think. Are we done? I don't know. I'm refreshing. I'm not logged into the right account. Are we live still? is the question. It looks like we are. Okay, chat saying we are still here. Did yeah. it drop? Stream is alive again. How long did it cut out? Are right, we gonna play around here? I'm just gonna go with like kind of super cold. Yeah, they say we're back. Good. Glitched for just a second, okay, well. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, sorry about the jump, but I'm glad it's immediately back. That's good. Glad I was looking at the system to see the OBS cut out and notice. Did it drop? Yeah, just for like, someone says like 0.5 seconds. So we're good. We're just going to do kind of a... Well, thank you, Chad. I think the pace just... <sighs> Yeah, 
So what, is this our last attempt here? Like what's yeah, going on? Yeah, I think the, the card is just not fun. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's done. So let's, can we explain that for people? Like why at some point they just stop cooperating? It's not dead, let's clarify No, that. no, no, it's not dead. It's just a, there's a lot of, you gotta figure we're going cold so much that there's so much, you can look at the card now. You might wanna point down to the, you'll see like all the cold on the back. You gotta figure that's all around the GPU, all on the memory. I mean, we're at, well, I just did this for kind of just to, to see, but we're at minus 146 Celsius, but uh, you could tell how cold it's getting around the core, and basically sometimes it just stopped functioning. It's just kind of how it is. It's basically what happens when you liquid nitrogen stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Everything gets super cold, and then it just stops responding. These are the times when you break down to protect I, the hardware. To too. protect the hardware. You don't want to keep running it like this, otherwise it's gonna you're gonna kill hardware. That's how you kill hardware. So as a, a pro overclocker, I'm basically <laughs> gonna kill it and say, We're done ski. Yeah, kill it as yeah. in stop. Right? Not, yeah, not we don't wanna it. we don't wanna hurt the card. All right. You have to use it for other things, but yes. That was still fun. What did we get? The final clock was So the final uh clock Let's see if I can get four fifty offset. No, four seventy. Oh. Four seventy five was it? Yeah. Okay. So we were, so 450, 475 should put us at a, like just shy of 2600. Just almost 2600. So we, yeah. sh we were at about like 2580 or something. Yeah, what we really should have done is basically right from the beginning, the, yeah. the, that would have been a fun stream. Yeah. Is basically go right from where we left off, which would have been 450 and then 1600 on mem right. at minus 115 with a, a one three and then just start from there. But right. We've literally been benching this card for four hours, hours. four hours. So. It probably just needs a break. It needs some sleep too. Yeah, yeah. It's just ha what happens. You need to kill it. <laughs> Can I just re never touch a running system? Someone said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can touch a system. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like it's yeah. Too funny. All right, so that was pretty damn good, though. Yeah, um, it was fun. Yeah, so we just shy of 2,600 megahertz. Can't really be mad at that for no, the 2080 Ti. Yeah. yeah, for live. Um, I know. If we spend a little bit more time on it and uh, kind of actually really, instead of me rush drying it and like really yeah. heating everything up, going through, reflowing all this stuff or all the Vaseline and going through and trying to not kind of rushing it because we're doing it live. All right. Uh, but. Everyone chat was like, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, do you wear contacts, Steve? No. <laughs> I don't know where that question where came from. That it's weird. From? <laughs> um, all right, cool. Are they running 99? Okay, no, 9980XE, 18 core. So, yeah, we're pretty happy with the, where it ended up for streaming and all that stuff. Um, I guess at this point, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll close out, break it down, sign a bunch of mats, and then Joe's going to the airport. Yep. And then I'll see you again in a few weeks at Computex in Taiwan. Yeah, that should be fun. Actually, Computex is going to be a blast. And uh, I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll be doing, well, Steve will be there too. We'll be providing content yes. on the G-Skill competition. And it's one of the hardest competitions there are, there is. And I'm one of the judges. So uh, it's for $10,000 cash. So these guys are working their butts off and we don't make it easy for them. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to be providing a lot of content on it because that's going to be my job mostly there. So, I don't know. Stay tuned and uh, thanks for watching us. Yes, thank you for watching. Uh, Super Chats, there were like, I think there's only, okay, there are three and I'm not reading anymore. So, Luke Pax and $2. You guys are giving me the LN2 bug FX8350 ran too hot. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a fun chip. You can hit pretty high clocks. I mean, you can hit seven. I mean, on good chips, you can hit eight, eight gigahertz. Right. But that's just... CPU-Z, that's just clocking-wise, not actual right, performance, right. but they can be fun. I've done a couple of them. Ryan Smith, $2. Thank you for not uttering the words toxic, because I was in response to something earlier. Patrick G, $5. Enjoyed the stream the past couple days. I ordered one of the last remaining house pads today. I appreciate you guys are signing it. Well, thank you for doing that. I think we really are just about out of those. Uh, yes, I have, like, to the black and blue... Is actually we have zero left for the the single skew. Awesome. So we're gonna cut it off here. It's it's too late. If you order a mousepad now, uh, it will Stansky. not be signed. Yeah, but if you ordered one earlier, you're good to go. Maybe I'll cut it off at like 4:42, which is one minute from now. So um, we're gonna get to signing those. 
Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. We'll be back to normal review content shortly. I'll have the Kingpin card tested under like stock, air, and uh, water settings. So that'll be fun. And then we have some other GPU content before Computex. And then there's a lot of stuff to see. Uh, subscribe to Bearded Hardware and check his Computex coverage. And thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Later.